very often in sports does a big event or rivalry start off the year. But there are a few exceptions. NASCAR has the Daytona 500, horse racing has the Kentucky Derby, and golf has the Masters. But around these parts, it gets no bigger than the Battle of Pritchard. Blunt versus Viger, and it's headed your way as we kick off the 2018 season with a bang. Week one action starts now with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Al Wheaton with Corey LeBounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. And, Corey, it gets no bigger than this. I agree with you, Al. For the 67th time, these two historic schools clash with one another. Over eight state championships combined by these two teams. Looking forward to the kicking off the high school season right here at Pritchard Stadium tonight. The excitement is in the air. The tailgating has been taking place since, what, yesterday, Corey? No doubt. It is time for the Battle of Pritchard. So let's get to it. Let's head to the checklist. Corey, this year, Viger is the home team. So what do you have on the checklist? list for the Viger Wolves tonight. The Viger Wolves, you look at, they have to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. That's something Coach Scott thought was very instrumental to them having a victory tonight after the contest. They have to make sure they take care of the turnover ratio. In their opening game last year, they turned the ball over four times. So it's going to be critical for ball security for the Viger Wolves tonight. And also, you have to have solid special teams play. Coach Scott said when you have two even matched teams, special teams is always a factor, Al. All right, this year Blunt is the visiting squad, so what's on your checklist for the Leopards, Corey? They have to shine like the Friday night lights that are behind us. Coach Holly wants them to play together. If they play together, they'll shine together. They have to carry over the execution from practice and make in-game adjustments. Coach Holly has a very young team, so there'll be adjustments on the fly that have to be made tonight, and they have to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to them. If they have a turnover in the red zone, if they get the ball into the red zone, they must capitalize. Absolutely packed here at Pritchett Municipal Stadium. You can't find a seat in the house anywhere, but you know what? We are live right here and we're bringing the action to you. Matter of fact, let's go to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn's got some early action for you. Yes, guys, it is the most wonderful time of year, and I'm not talking about Christmas. I'm talking about high school football. As you can see, these stands are packed here tonight. There is so much excitement surrounding this game, the Battle of Pritchard. So we are about to get started. We're going to see who is going to win this coin toss that's coming up in just a moment and see who's going to come out with the bragging rights for the winner of the Battle of Pritchard. You know it, Kimberly, it's the Battle of Pritchard. And Corey, there's always impactful things. So hey, let's get to the impact players. Viger's the home team, who you have for the Viger Wolves. For the Wolf Pack this evening, it's going to be very important that these impact players play a critical role in the game. And as we're looking at Fred Austin, he's a senior defensive lineman for the Viga Wolf Pack, and he makes a difference. And he's going to lead this team tonight as far as being a tackling machine. You also have Jalen Whitsett. He has outstanding and excellent vision. He's a dynamic running back who rushed for over 1,000 yards and 16 touchdowns last year for this Viger team. I'm pretty sure both of them will definitely have impact. Seniors, they have a lot of experience. Now on the flip side, across the gridiron for the Blunt Leopards, who are your impact players for tonight? Kobe McCovery, the big offensive lineman for the Blunt Leopards, is going to be key. They're, if they want to have success run the football, they'll do it behind this young man and all the meat that he packs on his body. Cortland Martin is definitely a difference maker for the defensive side of the ball for the Blunt Leopards. He's a defensive tackle, 6'2", 260-pound senior. We'll be calling his name a lot tonight, Al. We sure will. Appreciate that impact players for Viger and Blunt. It is absolutely electric in the house tonight. Coin toss about to take place, as you can see it right there on the field. We are giving you the live shots from Pritchard, Alabama. Corey, I often hear you say it, man, it's not a big game here on the Gulf Coast or the state. This is a big game across the entire nation. It is. I mean, it's one that's looked upon. Many Hall of Famers, not only here in the state of Alabama, have played in this game. Just the history that rides behind these two traditional powerhouse programs does not get any better. We saw the camera shot earlier that featured I-65 cars used to stop on the interstate That's right. to stop and watch this football contest. It's going to be standing room only tonight. 
The adrenaline is high. Couldn't find a better way to start off the 2018 high school football season. As you can see right there in front of you, Viger is getting the ball here first as get, we get ready to head toward action here, kicking off the season for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. No better way than the Battle of PA. Blunt hasn't lost to Viger since 2012, so a lot on the line tonight for the Blunt Leopards. They want to keep their winning streak going. They want to keep it intact. We, Corey, we had opportunity. We were down tailgating in the parking lot earlier. I think someone came up to us and said, Viger at one point won 12 or 13 in a row. But right now, Blunt, Blunt has the momentum in this series. When we talked to the Viger players at Media Day, they just spoke upon the fact that they didn't want to be that class that had never been able to beat their backyard rival. And it's going to be very important that these seniors Get, it'll mean a lot to them, out to get this win tonight. It really would. It really would. We are here live at Pritchard, and weather is pretty good tonight, Cora. 85 degrees. Humidity a bit higher than it was last night for our LaFleur BC rain telecast, 71%. Slight chance of rain, 15%. And, yes, I do feel the winds out of the east at 5 miles per hour. So uh, Mother Nature has helped us out because typically, Corey, this is one of the most hottest, humid times of the year for high school football. The end of August, it's going to be interesting to see. We saw last night in the second half in the LaFleur and BC rain game, some of the players starting to get cramps late in that contest. So it's important that these players stay hydrated. Right now they're playing with a lot of adrenaline, a lot of emotion once they pass that first lick. It'll be interesting to see at what point in the game, if and when, anybody cramps up because conditioning is always a factor in late August, early September. That's why we take those heat timeouts. That's right. I was just about to say that at the first dead ball under six minutes in each quarter, we will have a timeout from the officials. Got to take care of the kids. And, Corey, you talked about it earlier. So many impact, impactful players and impactful people. I'm talking former Viger Wolves, former Blunt Leopards, uh, we saw all kind of people down tailgating. As a matter of fact, former Mobile County Public School Superintendent Martha Peake, she's in the house. We saw her tailgating a little bit and had a chance to speak with her. It is so many dignitaries, honorees, entertainers. It is the place to be right here in Pritchard, Alabama tonight. It's where it's happening now. You look at, and again, it's shoulder to shoulder. If you didn't get in the parking lot by 6 o'clock, you didn't get a, a parking space, and you were walking off of Main Street in Pritchard. <laughs> Back to receive from Viger. It's James Jackson and also Artel Howard. There's a shot of former Superintendent Martha Peake. Told you she was in the house and doing the kicking duties for Blunt. There it is, Emerson Stripeson. He gets it down, and we are underway. Artel Howard, he's a senior. Nice run back up to about the 40-yard line, and the action has started for the Battle of Pritchard. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for your Viger Wolves tonight. Quarterback Kyle Walker, he's a senior, 6'3", 185. He'll get the start tonight. Viger averaging 278 across the front line, and they are a very senior heavy Layton squad. Only four underclassmen on this starting lineup here tonight, Corey. Head coach Derek Scott is replacing four out of five offensive linemen, and that's going to be critical to watch. They have six offensive returning players, eight defensive, 26 total seniors for Derek Scott and this Wolfpack team. Now, the Viger Wolves feature a very potent offense. They run various schemes, various formations. And before we can get started, Corey, we have a stoppage in play. And uh, Coach Derek Scott has called timeout before our first snap. So maybe uh, some miscommunication for the Viger Wolves there. And he is unhappy. He's on the sidelines letting the young man have it. That's going to be Kentrell Sewer that he's given an earful because you know going into the game what your personnel is supposed to be, and it wasn't there, so he had to burn one early. While we have a break right here, let's take a look at the Blunt Leopards starting defense. You just talked about Cortland Martin, one of the impact players for tonight. Blunt averaging 263 across their front line. A lot of seniors here on the Blunt defense, but overall, they lost 33 seniors to graduation, so it's a very young team. You mentioned it, Coach Holly almost, we don't, we don't want to call it a rebuilding year, but this is a very, very inexperienced Blunt squad tonight. Coach Holly takes the brick by brick mentality and building these young men and their character. Character is so very important in which Coach Holly enforces, and you'll see a lot of great sportsmanship by both teams tonight. I think we're about to get our first snap. Walker steps back and he airs it out. 
He does have receiver, and that ball is intercepted. Corey, first play of the ball game, Jordan Harris Mitchell with the interception for the Blunt Leopards. Wow, our first turnover. And Kyle Walker had a problem with that last year. We talked about it in my checklist. You must value the football. They went for the kill shot on the first play of the game, but you look at the blunt defensive back, Jordan Harris Mitchell, high point of the football at 5'10", 175 pounds. As we look at the replay, Kyle Walker drops back in a great interception. He was able to come away with it. Almost like a punt, a punt Al, but in this situation, you don't want that turnover early. So the Blunt Leopards out on offense already, and boy, the excitement has started here in Pritchard. Marcus Brown taking the snap. Hands it off to the up back right there. He gets a couple yards, Jarris Williams. Let's take a look at the Blunt starting lineup there by LaMarcus Brown, quarterback, 6'2", 190. He's a sophomore, gets that early start. Also, one of your impact players, you talked about him, Corey, Kobe McCorvey, 6'3", 330. And that's a big Blunt line, averaging 314 pounds across that offensive line. This Viger defense gave up 14.2 points last year. They're, that's the strength of this team. Second down for the Leopards. Nice carry by Williams right there. Appears as if, appears to be enough to get the first down. Let's take a look at the Viagra Wolves defense. The Wolf Pack, very, very experienced. Desmond Little, 6'5", 225 right there. Look out for him. Defensive tackle averaging 250 across the front line. They play that 4-3. So, Corey, this is a very, very experienced Viger Wolves defense, and they're known for defense here at Viger. And the Darius Evan Bugsby made that last tackle, had 30 solo tackles a year ago and five interceptions. First to 10 for the Leopards. Hand off to Williams once again. He's met at the line, stifling defense right there. That's going to be no gain. Maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. Just tried to power forward and move the sticks. They were able to have success on the last possession, but Viger Frederick Austin, the defensive tackle, six foot, 275 pound senior, has offers from West Alabama and Tuskegee. Had five sacks a year ago, no gain on the play for the Leopards. Second and 10 for Blunt, spreading it out. Receivers at the bottom, hand off to Williams again. He's juking and moving, and he picks up the first down, gets to about the 44, maybe 45-yard line. Nice run by Williams there. Nice cutback on that play. Jarris Williams, the 5'10", 190-pound sophomore, with stopped in his tracks and absolutely shook one of the Wolfpack defenders to the ground, was able to move the sticks, and that's just a, a hole that I think Alonzo Johnson, the offensive coordinator for Blunt, they found something on the left side of that line that they really like and they're going back to. Ball placed at the 44-yard line of Blunt trying to get past the midfield stripe right there. Brown decides to keep it, takes it up the gut, picks up maybe four or five, takes Blunt to second down. And now you mentioned it, LaMarcus Brown, 6'2", 190-pound sophomore, gets the start for the Blunt Leopards. Talking with Coach Holly earlier this week, he wasn't sure wh who was going to get the start at quarterback. He said it was going to be a game time decision. And that time on that run pass option, LaMarcus Brown decided to keep it himself and get positive yardage. Second down, we'll call it second and four here at the stadium. They're calling it second and three. We'll call it a long three. We've yet to see Brown air one out. All ground game right here for Coach Lev Holly and the Blunt Leopards and uh, picking up another first down and playing smart, Corey, keeping the ball on the field, ball control, and also using the clock as their ally as we approach eight minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Third down and one yard to go. This is the type of yardage to where the Blunt, D, uh, excuse me, Blunt offense wants to get the push on the offensive line and continue to move the sticks. And off once again to Williams. He's met, he's close to the first down marker. Let's see where the official spotted. We talked about so many dignitaries, exciting people in the house, and we're gonna have a lot of interviews tonight with former Viger players, former Blunt players. Corey, I have a feeling we could take it to the highest of highs with former players tonight. So much tradition and so much rich talent has played 
for both of these teams, Al, and we'll be seeing some of that tradition-rich talent throughout the contest tonight. So it is a first down for the Leopards, continuing with the ground game here. Williams up the middle, and that big, blunt offensive line, averaging 314 across the front, is pushing Viagra back continuously as Coach Holly's not allowing the young man to air it out. They're just keeping it on the ground. Adolph Craig, the 6-foot, 200-pound junior, made the stop on the play. Craig had 40 solo tackles a year ago, plus one interception, but Blunt's going with a little quicker tempo now. Maybe our first attempt right here from Brown. He's airing it out, incomplete. Tried to get that ball out to Lakeidra Tucker. Threw it a little too far, second down for the Leopards. And we mentioned offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson wanted to go ahead and set up the run. Run, run, and now you see the pass. So it's very important that the defensive backs for Viger remain disciplined and have eye control and don't go for the play action that Blunt setting up. Third and about eight for the Leopards. Met at the line and stopped on that carry. Keldrick Smith, that's a no-go, and the Wolfpack shut it down. That's a big stop by Frederick Austin. Tackle for loss. That's something that the Wolfpack was trying to do earlier in this drive, and they ran the ball, Blunt did, to the exact same hole between guard and tackle, and Fred Austin was standing right there and was able to make the big stop. Blunt is going to kick here. They're going to punt away. Back to receive for the Wolves, Artel Howell. Handling the punting duties for Blunt, Emerson Strafson. Nice punt by Strafson there. Wolves decide to let it just run out. And Blunt downs the ball at the Bar Vigors about 21 yard line. Let's take a look at our two coaches. Corey, these guys are very familiar with each, with each other. They used to be assistant coaches right here at Viger years ago. Lev Holly, former coach at Escambia County head coach, as a matter of fact. And look at their best winning percentage of all Blunt coaches after three years. He's come in and made an impact. 722 winning percentage there, Corey. And we're talking about. Ben Harris being mentioned in the same breath as a head coach, and we know the success in the state championships he brought to the school. But looking at the first three years, Coach Holly has built that brick-by-brick brick mentality and done a wonderful job. Notice there, Coach Derrick's got his twin brother's offense coordinator. Said he'd like to work in real estate if he wasn't working in football. Artel Howard thrown out of bounds, but Corey, that is going to be a bit excessive. We see the penalty flags coming out. We know what's going to happen there. Yeah, in that situation, you had Sidney Collins get a little bit too excited, and it's going to be a personal foul, and it's going to cost dear yardage because they had a pretty good punt. Viger wasn't able to return it. If you take a look at the replay, nice hard run by the Wolfpack, and Wolfpack, you look at Colin, just sling him out of bounds. When you hear the whistleblower, you know he's getting ready to step out of bounds. You have to let up. You don't want a costly penalty like that. By the defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Will result in a first down. So the Leopards give the Wolves an extra 15 right there on the first play. Joey Pilgrim, as you can see, our head official tonight serving as referee, Grant Baxter, Kevin Anders, Vic Platt, Willard Ford, Ladero Thomas, and Jonathan King. Our officials are going to be on the job tonight. And this is a big contest, so you want to have your best guys on the field. We'll talk about it later on. Some changes in officiating possibly this season for the Alabama High School Athletic Association. That ball is dropped by James Jackson. Corey, I think he tried to run with the ball before he caught it. In that situation, James Jackson had 19 receptions for 322 yards one year ago. Nice pass. That's going to be on James Jackson to bring that football in. Kyle Walker put that one on the money. That's one I know Jackson would like to have back. Second down for the Viger Wolves. Kyle Walker back. They were in various formations. Looks like they're in that Wolfcat right there. Direct snap to Walker. Gets a, maybe a yard or two. He's going to lose his helmet and will probably have to come out for a play. Let's see what the white hat decides. Situations when your helmet does come off, 
you normally have to take a seat for at least one play, and now there's going to be a backup quarterback. Sidney Williams looks like he's going to come in for him, Corey. That's right. Just an equipment malfunction. We saw a lot of that last night in the LaFleur BC rain game. It's just one of those situations to where if you call a timeout, I do believe the player could come back in. So right. it'll be interesting to see what Coach Scott is going to talk about here on the sideline. Well, here's the situation, Corey. We are at 549 under six minutes. So it looks as if the heat timeout has kicked in. So with that being said, Viger looked out right there with Walker losing his helmet. So I do believe we're observing the heat timeout. And with us having a timeout right now, we have someone on the line with us, Pro Football Hall of Famer, Viger alumnus, Mr. Robert Brazil. Good evening, how you doing? Good evening, guys, how y'all doing? We are doing great. We saw you earlier riding around in the golf cart. You got your Houston Oilers jersey on. What does it mean to you, not only to be a Pro Football Hall of Famer, but a former Viger player on the field tonight? Well, you know, I went to both schools. That's what's bittersweet about this. I spent my ninth grade year over at Blunt, then I was transferred over to Viger. So it's bittersweet for me, but I do bleed green if anybody care about that up there. <laughs> <laughs> we do understand. Yes, I heard that uh, at one point you did attend Blunt High School, but you made the transfer over here to Viger. Talk about it as a former Viger Wolf, the history, this rivalry. What does it mean to you, Mr. Brazil, and for the city of Pritchard here? First of all, it means for the city. You got, I mean, you can go in anybody home right now. Everybody's at the game. Nobody is at home right now. Everybody in Pritchard is at Pritchard Stadium celebrating this game. The rivalry goes way back, but it's one of the best rivalries because it's bragging rights for a year. And hopefully that we can pull it out this year for Viger. Um, but we're going to have a good game. I, I can see them making up a great game here. Tell us what the green and white means to you and what it meant to you to go into the Hall of Fame, knowing that you were doing so as a Viger alumnus, went on to play with Walter Payton at Jackson State. But what did you learn in high school right here in Pritchard, Alabama? First of all, it was set way back before I went to Viger. I mean, even in the parks here. Then when I got a chance to go to Viger, people like Paul Crane, which is sitting in the stands, Scott Hunter, right. Don Reese, which is not with us, Ricky Young, I can go name Twitch that played for Viger High School that went on and got it made an NFL career. This is it's something in this water down here that people don't realize that is special that makes everybody wants to be an NFL football player. <laughs> James Jackson picks up the first down right there for the Wolves. You talked about a football player. And talk about this particular rivalry. Uh, there are players like yourself, NFL Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champions, college champions, state champions, player of the year. Just the prestige to play in this game is an honor in itself, isn't it? It is, man. Uh, to miss this game would be, be sad. Uh, to, to be here, you can really feel the, the atmosphere. I mean, this rivalry, I mean, words cannot express this rivalry. You have to be in my shoe or be in these kids' shoe that either go to Blunt or are going to Viger right now. This is so big. It's such a tradition. And I want this tradition to keep continue to go on because this is so special for the city of Pritchard. Coach, you've, you, you've also had an opportunity to coach and mentor young people, and you never gave up on your dream of becoming an NFL Hall of Famer. But one of the things that I think is most interesting, not only you being a, a, a coach and a mentor, the story of what it meant to you to get your gold jacket. Somebody told me that they had your gold jacket, probably you had to replace it, and that's interesting. Tell us no, that no, story. No, 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 I yet to get my gold jacket. My gold jacket was prepared and made for me, a special gold jacket, specially made for Robert Brazil. When they sent it to Mobile, they got the Whistler station. It was an empty box from FedEx. I haven't received that jacket yet there. In the meantime, wow. making me a gold jacket. I do have a gold jacket at home, but it's a borrowed jacket from the <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> wow. Well, before we get out of here, I want to ask you one last thing. We know you retired after playing a great career for the Houston Oilers, the only team you played for. But talk about this. It starts with us. You came back to Mobile, and you became an educator. Talk about that before well, we get out of here. If, 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 if you listen to my speech, it was a sad story that I couldn't tell no one. I was so hurt because in my 10th year, I was out at the Hall of Fame, from the Penn Hall of Fame game, one of the biggest games of my career. Lawrence Taylor's across the field for me. Right. I get a knock on the door telling me that I wasn't going to start. It tore me up. And I kept that stir and that pain inside of me. But it made me a better man. I came home and said, well, 
you can't be no more. You can't play no more football. But you can be an all pro daddy. Yeah. You can be an all time daddy. You can be an on time daddy. You can be all these things that you need to be. And that's what I only did for my kids and the other kids that's in the state down here in the city of Mobile. Well, we appreciate your time. Pro Football Hall of Famer, Viger alumnus, and I'm going to say it right here, also a member of the Mobile Sports Hall of Fame Corps, Mr. Robert Brazil. We appreciate your time tonight. You can't count all them Hall of Fames I got. Man. <laughs> I love it. Dr. Doom in the house. Dr. Doom. Right. We appreciate it. We continue to cover this game. It's a big, big game. Let's have fun. Thank, Thank you. you. We do appreciate that. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Pro football, pro football Hall of Fame. <laughs> he can't count the Hall of Fame score. And now what's interesting, too, he did <laughs> not miss a game throughout his career. That's right. And, and not many people can say they did not miss a snap of football. That just goes to show the mental and physical toughness that he had. Pro Football Hall of Famer Robert Brazil starting us off here with our interview. We have a lot of celebrities, a lot more coming throughout the night headed your way, so make sure you stick with us. While we were away, Viger did not capitalize, Corey. Their drive was snuffed out, had to punt that ball away, so Blunt with their second possession right here of the first quarter. 235 remaining here in the first quarter, and Adolph Craig makes another stop behind the line of scrimmage for the Wolfpack. Hand off to Williams, and he is pushed back by the Viger Wolves. Nice tattoo play right there by Craig and also Eric Thomas on the play. They just kind of double teamed him. A couple of yards gained in the positive aspect for the Leopards, but they're going to face a third and long situation. Yeah, third now. and long. Maybe a, a bit of forward progress, but not much. So, Corey, about third and maybe nine. We'll call him third and ten here. Ball almost close to the line of scrimmage for the Leopards. Browns decides to keep a little RPO, and he goes nowhere except into a crowd of Wolves. And that's a situation to where the Wolfpack defense rose up to the occasion and kept the Leopards behind the sticks the entire down. They were able to flip the field on the punt, which was instrumental. Now it'll be interesting to see now on this next possession if the Viagra Wolves can get their offense really going because it's going to be very important. You mentioned it earlier, offensive coordinator Eric Scott right. is calling the plays. This Wolfpack team averaged 24 points one season ago, both teams filling each other out here in the first quarter so far. And also, going back one year, Corey Blunt opened up with a 20 to nothing lead over Viger, and Viger happened to get a score right before halftime. So right now we're at 0-0. Artel Howard tries to take it on the bounce. He does, and met immediately and wrapped up by Jordan Reed with the tackle. Great special teams coverage by the Blunt Leopards, not allowing the Viagra Wolves to gain any momentum on that punt return. The Wolf Pack will take over, it looks like probably right at the 49 yard line. And we do have the officials. There is a flag on the play on probably the 16 yard line. Right. There's a yellow flag. Second punt from Strifeson tonight, Corey. He's a junior. And so far, both punts end over end and a pretty good hang time here for high school. And that's important. Again, special teams being a factor for both of these teams. You want to maximize the field value, and we're going to get our call right here. Illegal formation by the offense, not enough men on the line. Face mask by the defense. The penalties will offset, will replay the down. Fourth down. So we will replay, we'll have a do over here. We'll get to see Strifeson again. And back for the Wolfpack, Artel Howard, Artel Howell stepping on the field, along with James Jackson. And that could be a situation that benefits the Wolfpack because the special teams coverage by the Leopards was tremendous on that previous punt. And it's a situation now to where if Viger's able to hold their blocks and get some kind of crease or lane going on this return, they may be in the money and have something good happen. Speaking of a crease or lane, Corey, that sun finally went down in the west there, so we, we're getting a bit of relief up here on top of the press box. This one not as well for Stryzen, straight up and straight down. Looked like a 64-degree wedge right there that went nowhere. 
ball at about the 34-yard line. Corey, I think that may have been a net of four or five yards, possibly. 16-yard no, difference. I'm sorry, about, a, yeah, about, about 12, 13, yeah. A 16-yard wow. difference from where the ball is currently spotted and where that previous punt went. So wow. now the Wolfpack takes over on the Leopards' side of the field right here on the 34-yard line, and they're in business. 30 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Can the Wolves strike and try to put this one in the end zone, approaching the red zone? Walker with the handoff to Jalen Witsit. As you mentioned last year, a 1,000-yard runner. He's close to the first down stripe, maybe a bit short by a yard, yard and a half. Very shifty runner is Jalen Witsit. He has great vision. Coach Scott said he hits the hole with acceleration, and if he gets it to the secondary, it's over. Corey, we're approaching less than 10 seconds here in the first quarter, so I believe Coach Derek Scott is going to let the time run out. So as the first quarter wraps up, it's 0-0 with the Battle of Pritchard. We'll be back with more fun, more interviews at the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal, I uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County Public School System is excellent. For me and my child, I'm gonna stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. We welcome you back to the Battle of Pritchard. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has a guest with her. Hey guys, I am here with Jim Nagy, who is the new executive director of Super So what have you already um, learned starting this new job? Well, it's the whole thing's been a learning process. It's a lot different than uh, being, a, being a scout in the NFL. So it's kind of a day-by-day -day thing, but this is the best thing for me is getting back out on a football field or on high school kids. I mean, there's no learning involved here. This is, this is back in my element. I'm excited to be out here. So what has been the biggest surprise so far? The biggest surprise is just everything that comes with the job. When you're working in football, you're just really focused on football. And, and this new job at the Senior Bowls, there's so many more elements to it. The, you know, the marketing part of it, the, you know, promoting the game, and, and so all those things wrapped up to it, but it's, it's, a, different, it's a different gig. Yes, so um, I know that you brought Sylvester Kroom with you to work at this Senior Bowl. Yeah. So what kind of impact has he made? Oh, he's gonna, well, he's gonna make a tremendous impact. He actually had knee replacement surgery in June. So we've had, uh, Coach Kroom's been on the injured reserve list all summer. But he's gonna make a big impact going forward. He's a tremendous man, he's accomplished so much. He's gonna get really involved in our ambassador club that we just formed for all the former players that grew up here in Mobile. And uh, he's excited to be a part of that and, and he's gonna help me spearhead that and do a lot. He's gonna be involved in everything, for real. Yes, so can you just tell our viewers, what is the environment and the atmosphere like here tonight for this rivalry game? Yeah, there, there were so many big games this weekend between uh, you know, McGill and Sarah Land, or McGill and, and Spanish Fort and uh, UMS and St. Paul's, but I picked this one because I've just heard so much about this game. I've never been here, and yeah, the, the atmosphere is unbelievable outside. And the it was almost being like a college football game outside, so it's, it's pretty cool out here. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with us, and congratulations on your new job. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Boy, there's a lot of folk in the house tonight. Corey, look at some of the former Viger Wolves right there being honored tonight, and it's an honor for us to have on the Future Ones tonight. Got our Future One polo, so big shout outs to Future Ones. You will learn more about Future Ones as the season rolls on. No doubt about it, a new apparel company based right here out of Mobile, Alabama. Excited about it. Catch them on Twitter, www.futureones.com. Face mask against Blunt right there, referee Joey Pilgrim. Lays down the call, and now they're about to lay down the yardage. So Viger with a gift from the Leopards. And it's a situation now to where, as they just honored the back-to-back -back state championship Viger Wolves team, I saw Darryl Electron Williams and Roosevelt Patterson on the field and many others that 
participated and played a huge part in being back-to-back -back state champions. And matter of fact, they were national champions also. That's right, Corey. Matter of fact, uh, we're going to try to get... The yard line puts the ball on the 14. We're going to try to get Roseville Patter Patterson on later tonight, but also walking the sidelines. We'll tease it out. Who is that? Willie Anderson, Corey, down on the side. Looks like he's doing some coaching today. <laughs> I'm not mad at him. He's a wonderful Hall of Famer in my mind, a future Hall of Famer in the NFL, just like Robert Brazil. All right, we'll try to work him in as well. Kyle Walker takes a snap. He's looking. He does have Artel Howard overthrows him, but that was double coverage, so that would have been tough for him to bring that down. When you get down in the red zone area, you want to make sure you're valuing the football because that's something that Kyle Walker wanted to continue to work on in this offseason was making good throws and good reads. You don't want to throw in a double coverage and take a potential score, potential points off the board in the red zone area. Give me a little first uh, quarter analysis. What, do you see? What, did, what did you see tonight there, Corey? We're notched at 0-0. Both teams had the ball twice. Filling each other out, I think the run game is what's going to prove to be effective for both teams. Speaking of running, wits it on the run right there, just trying to maneuver, and it is a log jam at the line of scrimmage. Possibly no gain, maybe one. We'll take Viger to third down. And if you remember at the top of the broadcast, Al, I mentioned that Viger was replacing four out of five offensive linemen. And the big offensive linemen are going to have to get some kind of push down here in this red zone area if they want to open up a small hole or crease for the dynamic running back Jalen Whitson. Third and long for the Wolves inside the red zone, trying to get into the end zone here if they can. Walker rolls out. He does have a receiver right at the goal line, and that is a touchdown. Touchdown for Viger to Sidney Williams. Nice throw, nice catch. Sidney Williams caught the ball on his knees. He was wide open. That's the 6'2", 185-pound junior making that touchdown catch. Wolfpack trying to get their special teams together here, Corey. And for the point after is Jabriant, I'm sorry, Dylan Stallworth. Stallworth's kick is no good. Viger up 6-0 on top of Blunt. We'll be back with more action. You're watching MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Advanced placement program means that you are a student whose primary goal is to go to college. And being in the advanced placement makes that so much more real for those students who are inside of it. I feel that students shouldn't be scared to go into being an AP scholar because it's not how smart you are and it's not like your GPA, it's how much work you put into your classes and how much you are dedicated to your classes. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Viger on top, six to nothing over Blunt. Corey, our first score of the night. A little short pass right there from Kyle Walker to Sidney Williams. And Sidney Williams had two touchdowns receiving last year, and now he's almost doubled that. He's down, he's got half of that in one game so far, but that's something that this Wolfpack Nation wanted to see. They thought they would see that early in the first quarter, but adjustments now are gonna have to be made by defensive coordinator Lee Max Smith by the Leopards. And you have to, if you're a Viger, that momentum you wanna try to build on. You're here on your home field at Pritchard Municipal Stadium and you have the crowd backing you on your side. You have future Hall of Famers, current Hall of Famers right. on your sidelines coaching you up. You want to be able to capitalize off of that. Back to receive for the Leopards, Jordan Mitchell Harris and also Keldrick Smith. A little short kick by D'Anthony Walker, pooches it out of bounds. And there is a flag right there on the plate. Homeroom with Renee Phillips. Find out the latest homework tips and what's happening inside the schools and the classrooms with Homeroom with Renee Phillips on the MCPSS TV network. 
So Blunt can take it there, or they can uh, have Viger to re-kick, and they're going to keep it right there at the 45-yard line, Corey. Outstanding field position that will be established right where it went out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be on their own 39. Illegal kick by the kicking team. The ball will be placed five yards from where it went out of bounds. First down. So first down for the Leopards. Great field position. LaMarcus Brown setting up in the eye formation right here. Ball at their own 44-yard line. Hands off to Williams, met at the line, possibly a loss, Corey, as the Wolves continue to push him back. Jairus Williams, the 5'10", 190-pound sophomore running back, just wasn't able to see any holes as that middle was plugged up quickly by this Viger defense, and that's the strength of this particular team, Frederick Austin and Jamarcus Lewis plugging up at the defensive tackle and nose guard position. Viger known for the defense last season, only gave up 14.2 points a game, and right now holding the Leopards scoreless with 10 minutes remaining here in the first half. They're continuing to feed that ball to Williams, and once again, Corey, goes nowhere. A lot of Wolves in on the tackle, including your man Frederick Austin. Yeah, they're trying to run the football, but behind big Derek Steele, the six foot, 240 pound sophomore, not having a lot of success are the Leopards. So it'll be interesting to see if they do go play action here. But the thing is, it's always been third and long these last couple of possessions. That's right, that's right. Possibly a pass right here for the Leopards coming up, setting up in the pistol formation or looking to the sideline. The offensive coordinator Alvin Johnson, I'm sorry, Alonzo Johnson to get the call. Five seconds remaining on the play clock. Snap is off, and he is hurried. That ball is incomplete. All in his face was Adolph Craig, and the stifling Wolves defense tightens up more, Corey. Tried to have the screen set up for Jarris Williams, the 5'10", 190-pound sophomore running back that I just mentioned. And if he doesn't have that pressure and is able to make that throw correctly, there's all kind of yardage available. But once again, Viger's going to get excellent field position. James Jackson, Artel Howard back to receive the punt here. Streisand's last punt went straight up and straight down. Let's see if he can get his leg into this one and almost a duplicate, but it's end over end. Long hang time and a nice roll out of bounds right in front of us, maybe right here at the 35-36 yard line. So, Corey, first quarter, USA, both teams kind of felt each other out. Blunt continuing with the run game here, but Viger gets the score, also with some help from Blunt with a couple costly penalties. Yeah, and that's going to be the thing that's real important for the Wolfpack to establish is the running game. We saw the eight-yard touchdown pass that was thrown just moments ago, but it was all set up by the penalty yardage. So, Blunt has to go ahead and make sure that they're not committing the numerous penalties that they've already had here in the first half. First and 10, ball at the 35-yard line for Viger. Play clock under 10. Walker looks to the sideline to get the call. Snaps it with about two seconds left. That ball off to Whitson. He's got some room, but he's brought down. He picks up about seven or eight on the run right there. Coming up at halftime, we'll have our Chick-fil-A trivia challenge. First time of the season. Kimberly Dunn, we're heading to the stands. Pick a lucky fan, ask them a couple of questions. Maybe give them that multiple choice. I like that multiple choice, Corey. A, B, C, or D. If they get it correct, you'll get them hooked up with the Chick-fil-A prize pack. So stick around at halftime. Once again, I find folks over there at Chick-fil-A bringing you the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Second and about four yards here for the Wolfpack. Walker back to throw. He's got some receivers, and there he is, Sidney Williams, right in the middle. Was his knee down? It appears as if it was, Corey. They're coming in to mark that ball. But it is going to be a first down. His knee was down just like on the touchdown catch. It's going to be spotted right at the 48-yard line of the Leopards. But Kyle Walker, if he starts to get confidence within that passing game, it's going to open up a lot of things 
for the Wolfpack, meaning they can give the ball to Whitson, they can continue to find Collins, not to mention James Jackson, who had a drop earlier, looking to redeem himself also. That's right, they were looking for him at the first play of the ball game and had the interception. Now a little quick out to Williams, little screen, but flags are on the field. Williams turns it up. He's 6'2", 185, a lanky guy. He's a junior, but this one might be coming back. Let's see what the officials say. Yeah, Coach Scott on the sidelines, not happy at all, busting at Artel Howell on the play, and it looks like it's going to be called against the Wolfpack. So you have a huge play that's negated, and we'll wait for the White Hat to make the official call and give it to us. But you've got an opportunity to see the speed of Sidney Williams. Here's the replay headed your way. Good job by Walker. Sprinting out to his right and turning it upfield with Sidney Williams and Coach Scott talking with the officials as they're getting ready to walk it off. It is going to be against Viger. Right. It was a quick flash right there in front of the replay. You could see while well, Howell came in, probably had his hands inside, so couldn't uh, block properly. So this one's coming back. Nice pass by Walker, but negated by a penalty. So it'll be first and about 15, maybe 14 for the Wolves here. Now taking over right around the 47 yard line, their own 47 yard line of the Wolf Pack. It changes the play call and ability by Eric Scott and he's really zoned in with some RPO action that we've seen out of Walker earlier. 8.02 remaining here in the first half. Whitsett has a hole, couldn't break it open as he wanted to. Picks up maybe three or four close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down for Viger. Tackle made by Stephen Bell, the 5'8", 250-pound junior. Nice stop right there. A couple positive yards for the Wolf Pack. And again, that run pass option called the RPO. Kyle Walker has an opportunity to put it into the belly of his running back, wits it, right. or pull it, and then look for a wide receiver and sprint out himself. So it's a decision-making process, whatever he feels the defense to do. Play clock approaching one second. Snap just goes off, but there are flags on this play. Could it be a pre-snap penalty? against Viger, or let's see. No timeout, Blunt calls a timeout, so Coach Lev Holly calls a timeout right there. Right now, let's take a look at the home schedule of both of these teams here. We'll get an opportunity. This is their first game of the season. Years ago, this game was played at the end or sometime in the middle, but they've moved it to the top of the season here. Great view atop Pritchett Municipal Stadium here in Pritchett, Alabama, second largest municipality in the county. We'll get the home schedules up here for you. Last year, both of these teams made the playoffs. Viger 5 a team, Corey. Uh, Region 1 champs last year in the past two years. So they'll get a bye next week. And uh, they only have four home games this season. So they'll be on the road a lot this season here, the Wolfpack will be. The Road Warriors, and ultimately they will hope that their last road game will be at Jordan-Harris Stadium right. at Auburn University. LaFleur, as you see right there, they are into 5A. They were a 6A team last year, so due to reclassification, that LaFleur game will be an actual region game for the Viga Wolves. So right there in the middle, Jackson, Murphy, LaFleur, and Faith Academy, that's going to be a nice gauntlet that the Viga Wolves will have to run through. Murphy is an out-of-region contest. That's a 7A team, and they'll be playing that one at Ladd that night. 7-19 remaining here in the half. Walker, he's back. He decides to keep it. He's got room, Corey. Looking to pick up the first down and a bit more. So Viger out of the hole and back into positive territory. Matter of fact, they're in the land of the Leopards right now. That's probably the longest run of the game so far by Kyle Walker. And that's a huge run as well. There's a look at the new superintendent for the Mobile County Public School System, Treshel Threadgill. Corey, he's speaking with uh, Gressel Threadgill. He's speaking with some of uh, the Pro Football Hall of Famers came down with a Robert Brazil this evening. And he's going to do a wonderful job. He has a vision and he has a plan and he's implementing that and got all the teachers excited prior to school starting and all, everybody working on the same page as his vision. First to 10 for the Viga Wolves on the move and moving right now, Jalen Whitsett maybe picked up one, but the leper signifying he fumbled the ball, but I believe he was down. Yeah, they ruled that his momentum had stopped 
and you saw the leopard stripping away at the football, and you're pl you're taught, you know, play until you hear a whistle, and right. sometimes the referees go back and look at it and say, all right, I might have blown that whistle prematurely and let the run mature itself, but it just teaches you both things, ball security and play until you hear a whistle. Speaking about that whistle and taking a look this year, the Alabama High School Athletic Association has instituted instant replay for the home teams. If they purchase that equipment, Corey, possibly, Replays could be in effect this season at certain games. Walker doing the Skywalker move and just faking and juking. There is a flag on the play though. Yeah, there's going to be in the interior lineman getting called for holding. Right. Maybe a crackback block as well. On the replay, we really couldn't pick that up, but the officials definitely did in that situation as they're already starting to walk backwards. Joey Pilgrim and the officials sorting it out right now. Holding against the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. We have a heat timeout. Timeout for me. So we're going to take our heat timeout right here at 5.57 remaining in the first half. Let's take it down to the sideline. Kimberly Dunn, Corey, another celebrity here and former Viagra player, Willie Anderson. What's going on, Kim? That's right, we do have so many celebrities here tonight. I am here with Willie Anderson. So can you tell me a little bit about the rivalry and the heritage of this game here tonight? Well, I think it's one of the biggest rivalry in the state of Alabama, if not the biggest. So much history is involved in this game. Um, it's, it's our version of the Iron Bowl here, here in Pritchard, Alabama. You know, my family, my entire family went to Blunt. I grew up in a Blunt district, but my mom remarried, and we moved over to Viola district. So I grew up a fan of Blunt as a little kid, but as I got older, I became a fan of Viagra, moved to Viagra. And I think there's so many history. All these kids know each other. Both sides of the fences, both sides of the stands all know each other. It's one big community game, and um, I personally think it's one of the best things going on in high school football in Alabama. Yes, and you just mentioned the Iron Bowl. I know you played for Auburn. So can you compare this game to what it is like um, in comparison to the Alabama-Auburn game? I think if, if Alabama and Auburn was split by the, the, the small miles that, the, that we have here at Viagra and Blunt, it would be that same. I, I think these people live for this game. I think we, I think we have the day, have, have, have probably the biggest high school tailgate party you'll ever see with both sides playing against each other. And um, my voice is going out. Actually, my second or third game I've been to, my uh, Viga Blunt game I've been to in the last five years. So I'm excited to be back. We're honoring the 88 team, probably the greatest high school football team in the state of Alabama, maybe in the country. But uh, the atmosphere is great. The city of Pritchett, the city of Mobile, I think it's a great thing we have going on here. Yes, and you used to play here at Viger. So what is one of your most fond memories of playing in this game? Um, well, I had the unfortunate luck of being the first team to lose to Blunt. Um. <laughs> So my senior year, we lost 7 0. My good friend, Damon Craig. Um, like I said, we're all friends, these guys. All my friends are in the stands over here. Ex ball players that went to college, went with the pros. Damon Craig, who's the star quarterback here at, 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 at Blunt, was, was my, high, my college teammate at Auburn. And we just love each other. And uh, he called me all this week talking trash right now. But we had the unfortunate luck to be in the first team to lose to them 7 0. We packed out last stadium in 92, I think one of the biggest high school games ever. And, um, it's a game I'll never forget, the atmosphere I'll never forget, and um, I love seeing these kids do that. I actually had a camp this summer, um, offensive defense alignment camp with Viagra and Blunt for the first time. Both schools from the same field practicing and training together, so we had that with my lineman academy I have. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. We've enjoyed it. Thank you, Kimberly. Willie Anderson, former Viagra player, former Auburn player, Cincinnati Bengal, but also, Corey, just this past week, one of the Senior Bowl ambassadors that committee just formed to give a lot back to the community, just like he talked about with his offensive line camp and, there. And he's a wonderful ambassador for Viagra High School also. They call him Stu Mead. He was a multiple sport <laughs> athlete at his time at Viagra. Got a chance to watch him play basketball. We talked about that last night as he was at Ladd Stadium sure watching was. the Red Raiders and the Rattlers play. Sure it was. Fourth down for the Wolves. That pass incomplete to DeCameron Johnson. Got to thank my man George Reese, a former Viagra Wolves, for helping us tonight with some of our interviews and setting them up. So a uh, lot of love in the community going on. And he mentioned that we were just talking about it earlier, how long that uh, – 
Viger had that win streak going against Blunt, and he just mentions he was on the team that lost to Blunt there. Wow. You don't want to be that person. And again, the Wolf Pack, these seniors have never felt what it's like to defeat the Blunt Leopards, and they're trying to change that here tonight at Pritchard Stadium. Checking out the crawl right there. A lot of action going on tonight throughout the Gulf Coast area. You know, it's the first big weekend for high school football, so we'll have the scores crawling as they're coming in tonight. New feature we have here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. 358, Blunt Leopards back on offense, trying to get on the board, possibly to notch this up, get some points before they go ahead into the locker room. Hand off to Williams, runs into his own blocker, maybe gets a yard, but Corey, he... Kind of wrapped up right there. Possible loss. Eric Thomas on the stop for the Wolf Pack. 250 pounds senior on the play. Second down for the Leopards. Maybe a one yard gain for them on that run by Williams. That ball handed off to Keldrick Smith. He tried to weave his way around court, maybe got a yard or two. And one of the things that this Viger defense does so well is they have two edge rushers. De'Anthony Walker, the defensive end at 6'3", 215-pound senior, and Desmond Little, the defensive end at 6'5", 225 pounds, do a great job of putting the pressure on LaMarcus Brown and not giving him an opportunity to get comfortable in the pocket. Brown airs it out, trying to connect with the receiver incomplete. Kind of threw it away from him. He was running one way. Cameron Graves, the ball went the other way, Core. Yeah, that's a situation again to where Brown didn't feel comfortable in the pocket and just a miscommunication there. And we'll look for the Wolf Pack here to try to set up some type of return, some type of wedge because they've been in a situation, 252 remaining here in the second quarter, to where they would like to punch and add one more score prior to halftime. Streisman with the punt here, gets a nice one end over end. Not much hang time. Artel Howard downs it at the 49-yard line. He wanted to get in before that one took a bounce. Let's take a look at the blunt schedule this season. Next week, hosting Robertsdale, that'll be their home opener. And right there, September 14th, St. Paul's moving into 6A, up from 5A. So that should be an interesting contest. And also look at the bye in the middle of the, of the season. We had a chance to talk with Coach Lev Holly at Media Days and asked him about the Leopards' playoff performance past couple of years. And he said taking the bye at the end of the season kind of cost them a couple times. Kids were injured. They couldn't really heal up properly. So... He thinks that by in the middle of the season is going to help them out, Corey. They're going to continue to grow and get better as the season gets on. Again, trying to replace 33 seniors is tough, but Coach Holly is a guy who can get it done. Notice on that blunt schedule after that bye on the road back to back to back week. So it's going to be an interesting year for the Blunt Leopards this season. And again, you're doing it with an extremely young team. Coach Holly said this is the youngest team he's had since he's been at Blunt. And Tonight so far, you really haven't seen youth take its toll because you're only trailing 6-0 to zero with 2-10 remaining here in the second quarter. Right, they're not out of this by any means. They're in the game. As we approach two minutes here, Walker airs it out. Ball looks like it's tipped, but it gets to Artill Howard, and he keeps the feet in bounds. And the Leopards pass midfield in, I'm sorry, the Wolves pass midfield and into Leopard, tour once, Leopard territory once again. Coming up at halftime, we'll have the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Don't miss out on that. It's our first one of the season, as Kimberly Dunn will get someone taken care of, ask a trivia question, see if she get the answers, and get them hooked up with the Chick-fil-A prize bag with the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. I wonder what the question is going to be tonight, Cool. As long as it's a multiple choice answer, we're okay. <laughs> You're right, but Wits it bounces it outside, tries to make up, couldn't go up the middle, takes it out to the number. I think he ran about maybe 15, 20 yards to pick up one, Corey. And that's the thing, you must wrap up Artel 
Powell on the previous play gained positive yards for the Wolf Pack, and in that situation, Witsit just bounced off the defender who did not wrap up, and there's going to be a timeout call. Fico calls timeout. Speaking to Jalen Witsit, his favorite athlete is Lamar Jackson, and his dream car is a Dodge Charger Hellcat, and the way he was running on that corner, Corey, he was trying to step on the gas to get some room. When you need to know what's happening in the Mobile County Public Schools, watch Inside Education for all the latest school news and in-depth reports on issues that affect your child. With Helena Tyler, it's Inside Education right here on the MCPSS TV network. Well, Corf, let's put on your coaching hat right now. You're Derek Scott, and also maybe, maybe you're the offensive coordinator's twin brother, Eric Scott. You got a minute 26 remaining, the ball sitting at about the 44-yard line. What's your two-minute drill right here? You have one timeout remaining, and that timeout that they had to call on the first play of the game because personnel issues have now come back to haunt the Viger Wolves because you would have another timeout to burn in a situation where if a kid does not get out of bounds and you don't pick up the first down, now you only have that one timeout remaining with right. 126. I definitely think you, it does not hurt the Wolf Pack to go vertical right here. Kyle Walker has found his receivers and Artel Howell as well as Sidney Williams on some nice routes. And there's really one-on-one -on -one coverage here by the Blunt Leopard. So if he makes a good throw on the money, it'll have a, give his receiver an opportunity to go get it. Here we are, 126 clock running, low snap. Walker rolls out to a strong side, and he has a receiver, Sidney Williams, downfield. Corey, you just called it. They go vertical. That's a touchdown. Viral Wolves extending their lead. And that's just a great offensive play call. There was no help over the top. I recognize that in the formation that Blunt was running defensively. You have a leaper like that in Sidney Williams who can go get the football. As you look at it, Kyle Walker, all he had to do, and I say all he had to do, was roll out to his right and put the ball on the money. He was able to do that, and then his receiver, Sidney Williams, the 6'2", 185-pound junior, was able to high point the football come down with it as Zodrick Milligan was the 6'3", 195-pound senior in defensive coverage, was not able to stop him from scoring, and that's a big score right here before the half. Viger brought out Brian again to go for the extra point, but it looks as if they're going to possibly try for two. This formation is very similar to one that Blunt ran last year, surprised the Wolves, ran it right up the gut for the two-point try as Walker's trying to do right here, but he is brought down. So I think a little too much time went up. He couldn't, couldn't surprise the Leopards with that. Viger on top, 12 to nothing over Blunt. We'll be back with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal, uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County Public School System is excellent. For me and my child, I'm gonna stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. Hello, I'm Helena Tyler. I would like to invite you to join me for Inside Education. Come with us as we take a look at what's happening around Mobile County Public Schools as well as what's happening in your child's classroom. That's Inside Education right here on the MCPSS TV network. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Viger on top, 12 to nothing over Blank. Corey, the way it's going, you're calling it correct, man. You might get that Chick-fil-A trivia question correct tonight. 36-yard touchdown pass from Walker to Williams. Second touchdown pass of this duo tonight. Looks like they may have some chemistry going on. Yeah, we mentioned Sidney Williams only had two touchdowns receiving last season. I talked about he had one out of the two early. Now he's two out of two, and he's equaled his amount for last year. Low pooch kick there up the middle. It's grabbed by James Hunter. Corey, he had a beeline to the end zone and just dropped the biscuit onto the ground, but he did recover it, though. He recovered his own pick skin, and that's one of the things about a pooch kick. I guarantee that coaches are going to talk about that at special teams play. You look at the squid kick, didn't expect it to take that type of bounce, and because it did, 
the Leopards, James Hunter, was able to scoop it up on the good hands team and advance it. And now the Leopards are the deepest that they've been the entire game in Wolfpack territory with 108 remaining here in the second quarter. We do remember the offenses from Blunt the past couple years, very explosive. Blunt averaging 29.4 points a game last season, right now being held scoreless. This is something very unusual, but Williams on the move, weaving, trying to pick up the first down as the clock runs. We're at less than one minute. Let's see if Coach Holly's going to burn the timeout to save some time or if we're going to do tempo right here. And I oh – no, I'm sorry, that's – is it close to They are calling it a first down, so they'll move the we'll stick stop. score. That'll stop the clock momentarily. 56 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Now you're going to be in a situation where the ball is spotted right at the 11-yard line of the Wolfpack. So the Wolfpack have to kind of buckle up right here and, and strap on the chin straps real tight. Looks like Coach Derek Scott is going to use that last time out. And he does. Maybe he didn't like what he saw. Maybe his, his wolves were on their heels there, and he wants to maybe talk to the guys and get them to collect themselves. Very good timeout by Coach Scott because you've given up a couple of big plays on the squid kickoff as well as that nice run that was just made. Now you have an opportunity to settle your defense down, talk to your guys. Kendall Goodwin is the defensive coordinator, and Alonzo Johnson's over there talking to his offensive squad telling LaMarcus Brown and his running backs, Jarius Williams, just make sure that you secure the football. We're deep down into the red zone area, and points are going to be at a premium in this contest for the Blunt Leopards because you're trailing 12 to 0. It would be huge right here if the Leopards could come away with the score right before halftime. Time for one of your impact players for Viga to make an impact if the Wolfpack want to keep this shutout going. Frederick Austin, defensive tackle, says his favorite athlete is Aaron Donald. It might be time to channel some inner Aaron Donald here for Viga Corps. LaMarcus Brown's going to have to really show his composure as a quarterback and make sure he doesn't turn the ball over in the red zone. Browns decides to keep it with a little RPO, and no, no, no. It has snuffed out the Viger defense all over them, Corey. Eric Thomas does a good job coming up from his nose tackle position, making the stop, and Eric Thomas is the 250-pound junior to make sure Brown was not able to hit the hole at all. Lev Holly calls a timeout, needs to stop the clock. That ball was still in the field of possession, so clock was still running. 37.7 seconds remain here in the first half. Don't forget halftime, Chick-fil-A trivia challenge headed away. Plus, we have more interviews, more celebrities, and also, Corey, it would not be the Battle of Pritchard without the Battle of the Bands. The Wolfpack and the Leopards going head to head. Unity in the community. That's right. All starts out with the bands. We saw some community service work done by the cheerleaders by both schools earlier this week. And it truly is unity in the community when you can have everybody just tailgating together again. To our right, we saw that the Blunt and Viger tailgaters, as Willie Anderson oh, mentioned, yeah. We're out in full effect, almost creating a Super Bowl environment outside of the stadium, and you still see that smoke haze from the grills still <laughs> going on as we're speaking here at halftime. Oh, yeah, intense side-by-side. Side. I had one blunt supporter come up. He said, hey, man, thank you guys for being here and broadcasting the game. He said, I want you to know today, yes, we're doing battle, but we're all together in this thing. So he said, I'm a fellowship with my brothers with Viger just as I will with Blunt as well. And that ball across incomplete, Corey. It is a touchdown for the Leopards. LaDerrick Tucker, LaKedrick Tucker with the reception. Nice play action pass by LaMarcus Brown. Again, the Wolf Pack defense got caught with their eyes in the backfield. And LaMarcus Brown puts that ball on the money. An outstanding call by offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson in the red zone area right there at the 11-yard line, throws the touchdown strike. Blunt able to get back on the board here off of the squid kit, and I know that's going to come back, and Coach Scott's going to be frustrated about that play. Blunt with the try for two. And that is intercepted, but cannot be advanced in high school football, so it is picked off 
by Adolph Craig. He cannot advance the try. So Blunt on the scoreboard with six points right there, 11-yard pass to Tucker from Brown. And that's a good look for the Leopards, Corey. They were trying all first half to try to get something going and finally found it here with the little squib kick that they ran up while Hunter to get him set up with some great field position. Yeah, James Hunter, he almost fumbled the football and gave it right back to the Wolfpack on that ill-advised squib kick by the special teams of the Wolfpack. But nonetheless, the Wolfpack gave up that huge touchdown right here before the half. And as we take a look now at the replay by LaMarcus Brown, the throw that he had, first it was set up by the play action, almost a jump pass that he had, but they needed to get it and stretch it beyond the end zone. And LaKedrick Tucker, the tight end, 6'2", 225-pound senior, was able to do so and score the touchdown. So if you thought it was electric and exciting early, it really is now as the Leopard faithful back up on their feet. They had been sitting down, of course, so they're on the scoreboard right now, down by six with 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. Last year, as I said earlier, Blunt got out to a commanding 20 to six lead before halftime, and they pretty much stayed in control, but this year's a different story right now. Well, with 30.9 seconds remaining, Viger is out of timeouts, and so is Blunt. Excuse me, Blunt has one Says they have remaining. one here on the scoreboard, and, and thank goodness it's still working for us right now. So uh, I do believe they have one timeout left. The biggest thing for Blunt right here is to make sure that Viger does not set up a big return because we just saw how Blunt was able to get on the board. Viger's capable of doing the same thing. So you risk a squib kick here. I think you kick it as far as you can and make Viger return it. Be in with the kickoff right there, taken by James Jackson. He has a move, Artel Howell blocking for him. He moves again, gets some great field position up to about the 47, 48 yard line as the clock stops at 21.7. We saw Viger go vertical on their last position. Corey, you called it. They connected with uh, the Walker Williams connection. And right now with 21 seconds left, you never know what could happen here. Lee Max Smith, the defensive coordinator for the Blunt Leopards is gonna have to make sure that he has help over the top and doesn't get beat on that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Looks like one of the Leopards down on the field, see if we can get a number on him and a name being attended to by the trainers. We've been blessed tonight, Al, to where this is our first really stall in play. We not really seen anybody cramping on the field, but this appears to be a little bit more than a cramp by one of the Blunt Leopard players. And that is gonna be James Hunter, the young man who was able to pick up the squid kick right. earlier, being helped off the field by the athletic training staff. It's good to see that, Corey. He is able to walk and be mobile right there, so hopefully he'll be back in the second half to continue play. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk to the Director of Communications for the Mobile County Public School System, Renee Phillips. She'll stop by. Maybe we'll set up the year. Throughout this year, we'll be talking with different personnel from the school system, so stick around for that. Also, fans at halftime and the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge, and I'm pretty sure some more interviews from Kimberly Dunn on the sideline, Corey. I'm, and I, I can't wait for her to talk to either of these coaches to kind of get their pick their brain right here as to what's going on. Yeah, here's the situation now. The Wolfpack are going to go a Hail Mary. They'll have a couple opportunities as Kyle Walker scrambling around. He's not going to be able to get any traction as the Leopard defense steps up to the task. They sure do. He is wrapped up by a couple of Leopards right there. To, to Cameron Johnson in on the tackle along with Christopher Lovett. Christopher Lovett. 5'11", 200-pound senior on the stop, and that's going to bring us to halftime. That is going to take us to halftime. Viger on top, 12-6. to six. Interesting first half so far here. Viger pretty much in control, but Blunt gets a little help off that squib kick, and James Hunter takes it down. Could have possibly taken it for a touchdown, but lost control of the ball. They did regain it. But so Blunt does get on the board, Corey. So right now, very competitive game, 12-6, to six, I would say. Yeah, you were hoping if you're a Wolfpack fan that they would be able to sustain that shutout and have a little momentum going into the second half. But Blunt was able to answer and some great play calling, some great execution offensively by the Leopards. And they were able to catch six. And 
neither team has been able to be special on special teams because we haven't had a point after conversion that right. has been kicked, converted yet. So, therefore, our score at halftime is 12-6, to six, Al. I think we're trying to get down to the sideline and see if Kimberly Dunn can catch up with Viger coach Derek Scott. I like how you talked about that. Both teams going for two-point tries, even Viger pulling out a formation that Blunt did last year on them, and Blunt pretty much snuffs it out. So we're notched up at 12-6, to six, no extra points. Special teams not really coming to play with the points tonight. Yeah, you wouldn't expect anything different than a close game in this huge rivalry game between Blunt and Viger. The 67th edition between these two schools, and it's kind of been dominated by Viger in the old overall history of the game, but right. 12 to 6 our halftime score, adjustments will be made. I look for the second half to pick up. It's going to be interesting again, conditioning in the second half. You have to hydrate properly here at halftime to cool down and kind of reevaluate things for both coaching staff. Yeah, you're right about that. Halftime close to getting on the way. We can hear the bands on the field right behind us. I know Kim is trying to effort it to get a coach. I believe she does. Let's take it down to the sidelines right now. Let's just take it down to Kimberly Dunn. Hey guys, I was able to talk with Coach Scott before he ran into the locker room and I said, what does your team need to do in order to secure the win tonight? And he said, basically, he has to get out of the way and let these guys play the game and do what they do. He said, they just got to stay motivated. They got to stay on top of it, eliminate some mistakes that were going on at the beginning of the game. And if they're able to do that, he believes that they will come out with the win tonight. All right, Kimberly, we do appreciate that. Halftime is underway. We'll be back with bands plus an interview and the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. You're watching the Battle of Pritchard. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Thank you. 
It's halftime here at the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. And joining me right now, Director of Communications, Renee Phillips. I'm going to say a Happy New Year, but Happy Football Season to you. How you doing? Oh, we're doing really well. Nothing is more, a more happy time than the start of school and than the start of football season. You're right County about Public that. Schools and at all schools. And you know what? This year literally got off to a bang. A lot of excitement, new superintendent, new initiative. What's going on with the Mobile County Public School system today? So that's right. There's a new energy in Mobile County Public Schools. We have a new superintendent, Mr. Kressel Threadgill, and he has challenged all the teachers, all the students, all the employees to give it 110% this year. And so that's what we're doing. We're going to give it 110% and we're going to okay. see how far we can go. A lot of excitement so far. I think we're about three weeks into the school system, our, our first week of high school football, but a lot going on. We know we have signature academies. Any particular things that are new that are to specific schools or to specific divisions of the school system here? So we're continuing our effort to redefine ready in Mobile okay. County Public Schools. We're preparing kids to be college ready, career ready, and life ready. And a good example of that is at Blunt High School, we have our Health Academy. We're preparing students to be CNAs. And then also at Viger, we have our Technology Academy. Wow. And we um, have students who are doing Microsoft Office and all kinds of things. OK, OK. So you talked about Blunt, you talked about Viger. Now I know the school system is large and vast in, in elementary schools and middle schools. Anything for the younger kids this particular school year that could stand out maybe than the previous years? It's, we're focusing on the reading and the math everywhere, and so I think the project-based learning in a lot of our schools and some technology. We've got some um, 3D printers and other programs, some coding that students are doing as young as kindergarten, so a lot of wow. exciting things. we got to start them early to get college ready, career ready, and life ready. So, That's right. Director of Communications, May Phillips, we do appreciate it. Right now, speaking of the kids, we're going to take it back down to the field. I believe the Viger Wolves are about to give their halftime performance.
That's right. It is time for our Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. And I think I got a good one for our first one of the season. I'm here with Tanera Livingston, who is actually a middle school teacher for a lot of these kids that are here tonight, for both Viger and Blunt. Thank you so much for taking the time with me tonight. Oh, no problem. Thank you. All right, so our question tonight is, what is the official bird of the state of Alabama? And we've got it a little bit easy. We get multiple choice, okay? So okay. here are your choices. Okay. You have A, a woodpecker, B, the brown pelican, C, the yellow hammer, or D, mockingbird. What do you think it is? I think it's C, a yellow hammer. Yes, I was going to be a little bit upset if a teacher didn't get that right. So she wins our Chick-fil-A prize pack tonight along with a wonderful cup from Mobile County Public School Systems. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing our Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. No, th thank you. Yay! Thank you, Kimberly, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Right now on the field, former Viger alumnus Paul Crane being honored right now with something from the Viger High School and also superintendent and principal Cunningham right there as well down on the field honoring Paul Crane. A lot of people may not know it. Corey, Paul Crane, Super Bowl player with the New York Jets there. Yeah, he has a wonderful story to tell. Always tell stories about playing for Paul Bear Bryant and going on to play with Joe Willie Namath and just an outstanding Viger alumnus and having an opportunity now to honor him on the field. Gerald Cunningham, the principal of Viger High School doing so and just wonderful to have so many Hall of Famers and so many famous alumni to give back to this game. It really shows what this game means, not only to the city of Pritchard, right. but the state of Alabama. Stick with us. Halftime's going to wrap up pretty soon and the third quarter will be here before you know it. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. I'm Tracy Tran, and I'm in the Healthcare and Dental Academy at Theodore High School. In the Dental Academy, I'm working alongside dental professionals getting hands-on training from those already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job makes me want to work even harder because now I know what I want to be. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. To find out more, visit mcpss.com. When parents are involved in school, they get more of this and less of this. I think it's a good idea for students to enroll in this program because it offers uh, a sort of new way to learn. It feels like in AP classes you're actually expected to uh, learn and apply yourself and apply the knowledge as well. It helped me to learn how to work harder, it's helped me learn my limits as a student. It's sort of helped me to be more confident in myself as well as, as a student in my abilities. of this. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. 
Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goal. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School football game of the week. And the fireworks are literally going off right here. Viger on top, 12 to 6, as they just honored Viger alumnus Paul Crane and Pro Football Hall of Famer Robert Brazil. Unbelievable, Corey. The fireworks is literally going off here at Pritchett Municipal Stadium. That was an unexpected treat right there. It really was. But when you have somebody like Paul Crane and a recently inducted NFL Hall of Famer and Dr. Doom, Robert Brazil, fireworks are in order. So far here in the first half, Al, we've had fireworks of our own. And it's going to be interesting to see if the Wolfpack and the Leopards in the second half are going to be able to get into the conditioning that they really have to have in order to finish this game strong because four quarters is what it's going to take to win this game. And yeah. It's going to be fun to watch in the second half. This rivalry just means so much to so many people, and it's so very obvious by the turnout that we're having tonight. Uh, yeah, great turnout. Also, right now, a great game. Blunt has gotten themselves back into it, got that late touchdown. What kind of stat numbers do you have on the team so far tonight, Corey? Well, what's remarkable is Blunt only has 56 total offensive yards. They have two penalties for 30 yards, only 15 passing yards, 41 rushing yards. And you look at the statistics and you're saying, well, how in the world right. are they even sticking around? Conversely, Viger has 87 passing yards, 42 rushing yards for 129 total yards, three penalties for 30 yards for the Wolfpack. You want to see that cleaned up because the penalties are very costly, but that onside squib kick I don't think is what Coach Scott really wanted at the particular time going into halftime. Okay. Blunt was able to capitalize and put points on the board behind it. So plenty of football left in front of us, 24 minutes looking forward to it. Let's take a look back at your checklist from the beginning of the game, Corey. You talked about what was on tap for both of these teams tonight and, and how is it uh, working out for Viger so far? Yeah, Viger had to control the line of scrimmage and they were able to do that giving Kyle Walker time to throw the football and also Jalen Witsit holes to run through. They needed to take care of the turnover ratio on the very first play of the game. We saw Kyle Walker throw an interception trying to take the big shot. That's only been the only turnover for the Wolfpack. Right. Solid special team play we have not seen. We have not seen that. Now for Blunt, we talked about it at the beginning of the telecast. What uh, did you have lined up for them? Blunt had to shine like the Friday night lights. And so far, they started to shine brightly here as the quarter started to end in the second quarter. They also needed to make sure they carried over the execution from practice and make the in-game adjustments. Well, it looks like as far as from a passing standpoint, they were able to make the adjustments late in the second quarter, and they needed to take advantage of the opportunities given. That squib kick that led to the six points on the board for the Blunt Leopards was taking advantage of that opportunity. Interesting battle so far, 12-6, to 6, and listening at those stats, Corey, you're right. You're surprised that the Leopards are even on the board with six points. But you know what? It's a brick-by-brick brick mentality that Coach Holly builds over there. He's going to tell those kids, we're going to love on you, we're going to treat you right, but also we're going to fight hard for you. And just, as you can see, the Leopards didn't give up. They took advantage of, if you want to call it, that Uncle Mo opportunity when Hunter picked up that squib kick and almost took it to the house for the Leopards. Coach Holly's telling his team at halftime, we have to play one series at a time, one possession at a time, and if they're able to do that and put the last play behind them and move forward, they're only down 12 to 6. Plenty of time, opportunity for this young quarterback for the Blunt Leopards to get involved in this game. Viger won the Region 1 title last season. They finished at 9 and 4. They lost in the quarterfinals on the road up there at Demopolis, and Blunt finished last season at 6 and 5. Went out in the first round of the playoffs and lost to Wetumpka. So to keep their futures together, they got to start off right tonight, just like we're doing with future ones. Want to thank them for the gear that they're providing us. Also, got to send special shouts out to them, Corey. I am loving the staff shirts that Future One came up with for the crew, man. They look nice. Yeah, it's a situation with Trent Massey and Gus Smith. Want to thank them for all their giving back to the community and especially to the game day crew and you and I being on camera. Future Ones. You can contact them at www.futureones.com. Second half, almost ready to kick off here. Blunt should be receiving the ball. Clock seems to be operable, and 
everything in working order. Interesting first half. We're ready for the second half. Literally excitement. We've talked about the fireworks. And boy, the Wolves definitely put it on by honoring two former alumni of the school. Also, we got more interviews headed your way. We talked with Robert Brazil and Jim Nagy with the Senior Bowl, Willie Anderson. We have more in the third and fourth quarter. Plus, we got your Brain Buster coming up, your Game of the Week Brain Buster. So stick around for that. I'm very excited here, Corey. My first time calling the Blunt Biger game. I've been on the sidelines before, so I understand the tailgating and the atmosphere, but nothing like being up here in the booth and really taking that action in. Best seat in the house that we have, Al, high up top the press box area as we're getting ready for second half action here at Pritchard Municipal Stadium. Back to receive for the Leopards, Keldrick Smith and Jordan Mitchell Harris. That ball taken by Cameron Grays. A little shorter kick there. Great field position for the Leopards here. Ball at their own 40-yard line as we start the third quarter. What do you think Coach Lev Holly talked to his Leopards about in the locker room there, Corey, at halftime? Just being consistent. That's the biggest thing. Wanted his team to play without the penalties and play with poise. And if he's able to get his young quarterback, LaMarcus Brown, settled down and establish any type of passing game, I think that's the biggest issue for the Leopards because, again, only 56 total yards of offense in the first half. Cameron Grays with the return right there, lined up to the near side here at the bottom of the numbers. They're pushing him back up toward the line to the slot. The Marcus Brown back to take the snap. Now Grays goes into motion, so trips at the top. And Corey, I said all of that to say this. Flag on the play. False start by the Leopards. <laughs> Pre-snap penalty is something that you don't want to see, and that's something that I know Coach Holly is not going to be happy with because he wants his team to continue to remain disciplined, and that type of penalty just absolutely kills any type of momentum, especially on first down, because now instead of first and 10, you're looking at first and 15 or first and 16. Going backwards on your first series here in the second half. Brown has the receiver in motion, rolls out, a little quick dump pass to Williams. First time we're seeing that tonight, and that's a good look. Picks up maybe two or three, and thanks for the pickup from Jersey Mike speeding the crew. Jersey Mike's Corey, great opportunity, great subs. I would have to say it's a sub above how they took care of the crew tonight. Jersey Mike's and everyone right there, location on Dolphin Street. Location on Dolphin Street, Airport Boulevard, as well as in Malvis, one soon to be open in Sarah Land. Mark and Christina Sinclair, thank you very much. Very much. Authentic sub since 1956. Little RPO here for the Leopards. Seems as if Brown was confused. Maybe he didn't know which hole to hit, but Corey, that was just going nowhere. And again, great pass rush ability by the two defensive ends able to get up field and that's going to be the Anthony Walker and Desmond Little and when you have a 275 pound plug and a 285 pound plug right in the middle of that line and you have a good rush it, it's really hard to go anywhere besides bounce to the outside and that's the only success that Blunt's able to have not anything given up the middle at all. Third and about six here for the Leopards see if they can pick up a first down Williams went to motion. He did approach the line of scrimmage and stopped himself. Corey was like, well, where's the flag? And there it is. Just another one of those pre-snap penalties that are going to continue to make the Leopards go in reverse after being able to pick up positive yards. Right. Now instead of third down and about ball. six Ball's yards start. to go. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Now we did talk about this last night covering the LaFleur and Rain game, how early in the season you can have a lot of penalties. It's the first real in-game action both of these teams have seen. So you know the pressure's on, but you got to remain mentally tough not to have these small mistakes, but it can happen early in the season. Brown hauls back and throws one, rips it incomplete right through the hands of Cameron McKinney. Corey, he had the first down. That's a catch that has to be made because he's picking up all kinds of offensive yardage if he holds on and squeezes that pigskin. Wasn't able to come away with it. Now it's going to bring up a situation to where it's fourth down and 12 yards to go. As we take a look at the replay, the throw was on the money by LaMarcus there. Brown. It just has to be a situation where you come away with that football. Drives him, drives him back to punt for the Leopards. Put this one, puts this one up in there. Nice hang time right there. Fair catch. Artel Howard. I'm sorry, James Jackson right here in front of us. 
about the 38-yard line. So Viger with their first possession here in the second half. If you coach Scott, what did you talk about in the locker room for the Wolfpack there, Corey? Execution. I think execution is going to be the biggest thing. Getting that push at the line of scrimmage as Jalen wits it in the running game. Coach said he wanted to be a little bit diverse in what he wanted to do offensively, and I think that's going to be important here on this drive to see great balance by the Wolfpack. Have a leopard player down on the field right now, Eric Williams, number 22. So we have the trainers. Take a look at him. While we have a break right here, it's time for the game of the week, Brain Buster, Corey. All right, now it's time to count. We gave you a little uh, little tease last night. In the 47-year rivalry between Blunt and Viga, how many times have they played each other twice in a season? Think about that one, Corey. How many times have they played each other twice in a season? We'll give you the answer later on as your game of the week, Brain Buster. Can I, call, can I phone a friend? Can you phone a friend? It's, maybe uh, you could use one lifeline, but we'll wait a couple weeks. <laughs> Let's take it down to the sideline and check in with Kimberly Dunn. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, I know that we've been able to talk a lot of, tonight about this rivalry and what it means to these teams, and I just wanted to share with you what these coaches said to me. Um, I, I asked them, I said, what would a win like tonight mean to you? And both coaches said, you know, really, it's just about bragging rights because in the end, after this game is over, we are all still friends. We're still cousins. We're still next door neighbors and we are going to root for each other and we're going to support each other in future games and future endeavors. So there's just all great sportsmanship out here tonight, a lot of excitement. So no matter what the outcome is, these guys are still going to support each other. Thank you, Kimberly. You're right about that. I mean, they've coached together, played together, hung out. Coach Derek Scott and Lev Holly have coached together here at Viger. As a matter of fact, Lev Holly's undefeated, Corey, on both sides of this game. Right now, he's rolling an eight-game winning streak in the Blunt Viger matchup. So I think he's got a little lot on the line tonight there. He does. Doesn't know how it feels to take that L at the end of this game. Wits it up the middle. I'm sorry, Walker keeps that one. And boy, he picks up a big game first down past the midfield stripe and into Leopard's territory. Big game right there on the run pass option. Kyle Walker's longest run of the night, and it goes right up the gut. It moves the sticks for the Wolfpack, and the ball's going to be spotted right at the Leopard 49 yard line. First and 10 for the Wolfpack. Sidney Williams right here on the near side, close to us. He's received two touchdowns tonight. Little handoff to Artel Howard right there on the tunnel screen, and he is brought down, but maybe picks up two or three. Late flag coming in there, Core. Be interesting to see what this flag is all about as the officials are signaling to stop the clock. Joey Pilgrim and his crew doing a fine job tonight. We know we're going to see a lot of the yellow flags early on in the season. Also, it's a way officials get back into the flow. Kids get back into the flow as well. So it's a good, it's a good exercise. We don't like to see the flags, but it does allow them to get the work. Not a good look right there for the Wolfpack. So they're going to go backwards after that nice run. Personal foul. That'll be 15 yards. Just one of those undisciplined penalties that came right at the end of the play that you don't really want to see if you're Coach Scott. Right. You don't want to exercise the officials in that way, Corey. 15 yards, that could, that could be a momentum killer here. And that puts the Viger Wolves back at about their own 37-yard line. So that is a huge penalty. That'll set up, should be second down. The down marker headed at fourth down. I think they're going to try to straighten that out. Should be second down and maybe about 20 here, Corey. Okay, they have it together. Walker looking to air it out. Got a man, and we know who that guy is, Sidney Williams. He's off to the races, 10-5 touchdown, his third touchdown tonight. Wow, the Walker-Williams connection is on fire. 63 yards if I'm not mistaken, on that touchdown throw. The safety was late coming to help over the top, and Kyle Walker, from the beginning of that play, knew exactly where he wanted to go. One-on-one -on -one coverage. As we take a look at that replay, Kyle Walker just takes a few steps back, throws an excellent spiral, catches his wide receiver, Sidney Williams, 
in stride. He makes a nice move and is able to finish the outstanding catch with an even better run after catch. Dylan Starworth on for the extra point. Gets it up and the try is good. Try is good. So Viger on top. 19 to six right now over Blunt. Got to give some shout outs to Dylan Starworth, Corey. He was an intern with the uh, MCPSS crew this past summer as well. So uh, I want to give him some shouts. The, the, the guys in the truck say, hey, make sure you mention Dylan. He interned with us. There he is. <laughs> on the sideline, very excited for that Wolfpack score. And as speaking the of excited, faithful, did you see Big Rosie on the screen I right there? Former the Viger alumnus Roosevelt Patterson definitely bringing on the flavor. All right, Corey, we gave you the question. We're going to, have to try to sneak it in because we got a lot of interviews going on tonight. Game of the week, Brain Buster. In the 47-year rivalry between Blunt and Viga, how many times have they played each other twice in a season? Would you like to render a guess, score? I'm going to say once. Once, you're right. November 7th, 1986. And how could that happen? It was a first-round playoff game, and Viga won it 42 to nothing, Corey. Years ago, both of these teams played in the same 6A region. So uh, right now, they may be 6A and 5A, but back in the 80s, Blunt, LaFleur, Viger, Murphy, McGill, Davidson. Do you remember Alba? All those were 6A schools back in the day. So uh, only one time where Blunt and Viger have met twice in a season. That's a great trivia question. And the great thing about it now with one school being a 6A school and one being a 5A school, after this game is over, they all root for one another. Oh, you're right about that. Blunt on the move right now with the return. Jordan Michael Harris gets it up past the 25, maybe close to the 30 yard line. Looks like they're going to spot it at about the 29. So Viger keeping it vertical tonight. All of their touchdowns through the air, Corey, and they are big ones. As a matter of fact, the yardage has increased the first touchdown seven yards, the second one 11 yards, and that one a 63 yard bomb to Williams. 920 remaining here in the third quarter. And Sidney Williams, if he's not one of your Offensive Player of the Week award winners, I don't know who is because he's put on an absolute show showing his athletic ability in all his catches. Timeout by Viger coach Derek Scott. Maybe he didn't like what he saw there on the sidelines. And speaking of Player of the Week, we had an opportunity. Wow, we were electrified and put on with a great performance last night by Christopher Holyfield from the floor. He had two touchdowns. Corey, unbelievable, had a big 42-yard run for one touchdown, two interceptions, and ran one back to the house as well. Yeah, I mean, you just like to see all of them at their best here earlier in week one. And I asked Coach Scott earlier, would he like to see this game played at the beginning of the season or at the end of the season? He said he would much rather his team play the game at the end of the season right, right. because he would like to see his team mature and catch both teams at their best. Early, he knows that a lot of mistakes are going to be made. There's a lot of adjustments. A lot of kids have not played yet. So this is just a tremendous rivalry. Just look at the crowd, the atmosphere. There's not an open seat in the house, and you couldn't ask for a better matchup between two better teams. You could not right here. So players come back on the field. Looks like Coach Scott got the team together, didn't like what he saw out there, so burned the timeout. Down to two right now, and Blunt takes possession first and ten. Ball at about the 34-yard line. Brown airs it out. Does connect with Cameron McKitty, and he is upended. Was that Adolph Craig on the tackle there for? The Darius Evans Bugsby coming up from his cornerback okay. position, making an outstanding tackle. Again, this young man had 30 solo tackles last year. He adds to that new tally in 2018, making a wonderful open field hit. Second and about five for the Leopards here. Brown keeps it, heads up the middle, picks up the first down. Great job for him as he reaches out. We were just talking about some players of war with great performance here. Last week we had a chance to attend the Crichton Optimist Club annual coaches fish fry, and look who we saw. 
assistant coach from Blunt, Melvin Jones, picked up the Tim Uzel Assistant Coach of the Year Award. Great honor right there, Corey. It really is. It has an opportunity. Coach Holly spoke so highly of Melvin Jones, and he's a young guy who graduated from LaFleur, played football at Auburn University, is just a tremendous leader of these young men on that sidelines, and Coach Holly said he wouldn't be able to do it without him, and just one of the dynamic assistants, and you look at the head coaches, that the head coaches are an extension of their assistant coaches and are only going to be as good as their assistant coaches allow them to be. Player down on the field right now for Viga. While we have a break, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, region standings going on in the uh, Gulf Coast area here for high school football. For a region one, some changes moving into 4A from 3A. You have Clark County and Hillcrest, and also right there at the bottom, Williamson drops down to 4A from 5A. Coach Dedrick Sumter looks like those guys may get a break and possibly be playoff bound once again, Corey. Yeah, you have some great matchups that are going to occur in 4A Region 1. Your defending state champion, UMS Wright, and Williamson, who went 7-4 and four a year ago. I do believe they're down in the bayou tonight playing Alma Bryan. So good things. Looking forward to Coach Sumter in 4A. First and 10 for the Leopards. Try to get the quick out, and that ball is dropped. Jordan Michael Harris, I'm sorry, Gregory Carroll drops that right there. So second down for Blunt, 5A Region 1. Teams moving down into there from 6A, LaFleur and Satsuma moves up. New coach Ray Nelson up there at Satsuma. They've got some challenges. They're going to move into 5A Region 1. This should be a very competitive region right here. We hear a lot about 7A and 6A, but 5A should be just as competitive with Satsuma going up and LaFleur dropping down. Yeah, LaFleur is happy that they're no longer in 6A, but 5A, there's just as many tests. You just look at this Wolfpack team that's looking to go ahead and try to win another region championship. Williams with the carry picks up a couple of yards. We had a chance to see LaFleur last night in rain, and rain's a 6A team, LaFleur a 5A team. LaFleur got the victory 26 to 14. Looked pretty good last night, led by sophomore quarterback Hezekiah Belfon and Mr. Excitement there, Christopher Holyfield for the Rattlers. So uh, as play continues, we'll get the rest of those regions up 6A and also 7A Region 1 as well. Third down for the Leopards. Trying to keep this drive going, get the momentum, and that ball is knocked down incomplete, all in his face. Desmond, Desmond Little. Little, Corey. At six foot five, 235 pounds, you will be all in his face. Young man being recruited by Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Ole Miss, a who's who, and you can see why. You don't see too many long and lanky 6'5 defensive ends as we look from his left defensive end position, just swats the ball down, a batted ball down. Now Biger's going to try to take over and have good field position off of this punt. Martell Howell back to receive the kick from Strifeson. Blunt has been doing a lot of punting tonight. Many missed opportunities. Drives not being sustained. Punting once again, little line driver right there. Howell tries to field it, drops right in front of him. So he downs the ball right about the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at the 6A standings. Only thing that really changes there, we know the floor dropped out, but look who popped in. 5A champion, passed three out of four years, St. Paul. This should be a very competitive, probably the most competitive region in the state, Corey. I, I agree 100%. There are going to be two great teams in 6A Region 1 at the end of the year who are going to be looking outside of the playoffs because Baldwin County was 7-3 and three a year ago in That's this right. region and did not make the playoffs at 7-3. Seven and three. Seven and So three. that just goes to speak on how tough this region is going to be. You add St. Paul's, the defending 5A state champion, who are playing the UMS Wright Bulldogs tonight, and you just increase the toughness of that region. All right, we have the Battle of Pritchard, and right now it's the Battle of Oshel Row right there with UMS Wright and St. Paul's, and that battle won by the Leopards as they push Jalen wits it back with the tackle. Good penetration by the Blunt Leopards defense, not giving any ground to this running attack of the Wolfpack. Second down at about 13 for the Wolfpack here. 7 9 remaining in the third quarter. We always talk about Coach Liv Holly and and, and what these players mean, he said defensive end, Cortland Martin, this guy has the juice, he's exciting, he plays fast, physical, dominates the guy across the line from him. And matter of fact, he started every game in his career 
at Blunt High School. Cortland said he doesn't want to lose the night court. He wants that winning streak to continue. He does. He doesn't know what it feels like to lose to this Wolfpack team and doesn't want to be a part of that. And that pass was thrown incomplete by Kyle Walker looking for Artel Howell. Just throws it out of bounds, and it's going to put a situation now where the Wolfpack are looking at third down and 14 yards to go. They're looking to the sideline, getting the call right now from the coordinators. Whitsitt and Walker getting set up. Howell down here in the slot and Jackson up top. And they dump it off to the tight end. First time calling Ronald Cooper's name tonight. Corey, I believe he has enough for the first down. And that's just a great pickup. Ronald Cooper, the 6'2", 220 pound senior, comes from his tight end possession position and makes sure he does not drop the football, holds on to it, and he's able to pick up more than 14 yards, which will bring up a first down for the Wolfpack. Six thirty remains here in the third quarter at our first dead ball under six minutes. We will receive a heat timeout from the officials. They'll do this for the first four or five weeks of the season. Walker on the run, escapes the pocket, picks up a couple of yards with the lepers all over him, but he stays in bounds, stays in bounds, and the clock continues to run. Good pursuit of the football by the leper defense as James Hunter was able to push Kyle Walker out of the pocket, but. He was able to break containment. The defensive end was no longer there, and he was able to pick up a couple of positive yards for the Wolfpack. There it is, Corey. Our heat timeout right at 5.58. Referee Joey Pilgrim calls for it. So we're going to take a break right here. Let's take a look at the 7A region standings right quick before we take it down to the field and check in with Kimberly Dunn. Everything pretty much remains the same right here. Corey, I like to call it big boy football, 7A region one. Yeah, McGill Tulin made it to the state championship game a year ago. There are three times that they've been at 7A has been created. They've been in the state championship game all three times. So they're really who everybody else in 7A is looking to chase. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has someone to talk, someone to, talk to right now, Corey. Hey guys, I'm here with Tony Hairston. Um, he is a Blunt alumni who is here talking with us tonight. So, what was your record when you were attending Blunt High School? My record, we was uh, we went 13 and one when I was when I attended Blunt High School and state champs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so y'all were feeling pretty pretty good, weren't you? Yes, we were. Had an outstanding team, great coach, great players under Ben Harris. Yeah. So, what kind of emotions are these guys experiencing here tonight in this game? This game is more hype than any other game. Uh, they go out, the camaraderie of it and everything, everybody go out and have a good, great hard-hitting game and everything. It's just the community. It brings the whole entire community together. This game is like no other. It's played with a lot of heartfelt football here in Mobile. It's, uh, it, like I said, it's a rivalry. I mean, no matter what the record is and everything, it, uh, and it, really, it really brings the community together as well. So uh, both teams, they get all you know, hyped up for the game and everything, and everybody, it's a great experience. People janking back and forth, even on Facebook and everything like that. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's been a great experience for me even. Yeah. So what does it mean to you coming back to this game and experiencing all over, experiencing this all over again from a different perspective? Well, from this perspective, just coming back, it, it really just um, brings you back to the day you used to come out here and play football and everything. And uh, it's really the whole, the whole era, the whole, the whole phenomenon of just playing this game, it just, it brings back, you get chills out here even, uh, during you know, this game and everything. And it really, um, the, just the excitement of it. Community, you think back, which play, you went out there when you played and everything, you kind of think back to the big plays you made and all that kind of thing. So it really says to, you know, the, uh, to, it takes you to another level when you're out here and, and the crowd's into it, the fans are into it, the bands, the ballad of bands and everything. So this has been really a great experience, a great hype and everything, you know, it, it really just puts you back in that zone when you play football and everything. All right, well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Tony Red Harrison, he's a member of the Alabama A&M Hall of Fame, Corey. Great player right there down on the field, former Blunt Leopard, also a member of the Mobile Sports Hall of Fame committee as well. Yeah, I saw him, you know, the Gulf Coast Challenge is coming sure here is. at A&M and Southern, and he was part of that as A&M will be taking on 
Southern, and, and when they made that announcement, he was at the press conference, and he had on his maroon and white and just wore that. that with a lot of pride, just like he wears the purple and white with a lot of pride. Penalty on the play against Viger pushes them back, trying to keep the momentum going, but once again, behind the sticks, Corey, Looks like it's going to be another second and long for the Wolfpack. In this situation, you've seen the Wolfpack be able to try to go vertical down the field. Kyle Walker just has been throwing a jump ball to Sidney Williams, and anytime Sidney Williams lines up in his wide receiver position, now you see a safety shading over to his side. Bobble snap right there for Walker. Tries to unload it. He does to Cooper. Big tight end, they forced him out of bounds, but the clock is still running. His momentum kept him in bounds before it went out. So it'll be third down and still long for the Viger Wolves. The situation for Viger, you're on your side of the football field. You don't want to have any turnovers. You would rather go ahead and bring up fourth down and punt the football, giving yourself an opportunity to make Blunt earn every single yard that they get here in the third quarter with 439 remaining. Had one big play here for the Viagra Wolves, that 63-yard touchdown pass to Sidney Williams. But the rest of the quarter, for every forward step they've taken, they've pushed it back with some costly penalties. Look quick out to Williams once again. He's got some room. Another yellow flag hops onto the field there. And I don't know if it's going to be a holding or a block in the back by the Wolfpack, but I do believe this is going to be against Viger. I agree with you on that. We'll let uh, referee Jory Pilgrim sort it out with his crew. Four seventeen remain here. remains here in the third quarter. We're live at Pritchard Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard. Al Weed and Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn, we appreciate you joining us for this action. Blocking the back by the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Jacor, you were right where there. Had your officials cap on. Blunt decides to decline the penalty. Pass was way short anyway, so it's fourth down. They should get some good field position after this punt. And normally on those quick bubble screens, when you have a wide receiver trying to catch the cornerback, he was able not to see his numbers and hit him from behind, and the referee on the sideline was able to go ahead and see that quickly and throw his flag. Smith and Mitchell Harris back here to retrieve the punt. Right at the 4.15 mark, punt straight up in the air. And wow, takes a Leopards backwards bounce. A lot of backspin on that one. So Blunt does benefit from the punt here. Corey, great field position on the other side of the 50 ball right here at about the 40, I'm sorry, about the 38 yard line. Yeah, I mean, in this situation for the Wolfpack, now the Leopards are in Wolfpack territory right here at the 42 yard line, it looks like, Allen. It's a situation now for Blunt. You want their quarterback, LaMarcus Brown, to go ahead and find some type of offensive rhythm. The only throws he's really been able to complete was the slant to the tight end for the touchdown pass, which consisted of maybe some 12 or 13 yards. Not have, They haven't had a lot of success running the football between the guard and tackle. have had to bounce everything to the outside. So let's put a mark on it, 4-0-2 here in the third quarter. Brown handing it off, and that play looks as if some confusion was going on there, Corey. A lot of confusion as our white hat gets knocked down in the process. Hope he's okay tonight. Nice little lick taken there. <laughs> and Joey, it was think, a stretch play. Yeah, I think to Joey the Pilgrim outside. Be right. Yeah, Joey Pilgrim took a nice hit right there, and he's getting his cap back together. As we take a look at the stretch play that was attempted to be run, and unfortunately for the Leopards, Keldrick Smith went and ran in the wrong direction. The 5'9", 160-pound freshman made a freshman play as we look at Pilgrim get hit on the play and trying to bounce back, look like he's up and okay. I think that's what made the, made the play look so, so weird there. Both players were running in the same direction. Hand out to the back up the middle. He picks up maybe one or two. But Blunt took a significant loss on that first down play they tried to run. It's going to be about third down and close to 20 yards to go. 
I'm sure these are the situations that Lev Holly and Alonzo Johnson are probably discussing on the sideline court. Once you think that they may be trying to get that momentum and then they start going backwards again here. Not the typical Leopards defense, I mean offense that we're used to seeing. They're airing it out right now, but that ball is well overthrown, out of bounds, incomplete. And that takes Blunt to fourth down. Yeah, Blunt's going to have to punt the football right back to Viger with 2.33 remaining here in the third quarter. That drive just didn't look good at all for the Leopards, and it's a situation to where they went backwards on a couple of plays. Hey, great field position, great opportunity. The original line of scrimmage was the Viger 38-yard line, and that series did not produce any offense. 2.33 remains here in the third quarter. Play kind of getting a bit sluggish here. Strives him with the kick. Artel Howell runs under it, picks it up. Dives to about the 27, 20, 26 yard line. So Viga once again with the ball. A lot of series here for both teams here in the third quarter. One big play for Viga as we talked about that 63 yard touchdown pass to Williams. And speaking of exciting and, and players from the past, before the game we had a chance as we were talking to coaches and we looked over to the Viga sideline. And who did we see? Defensive back, kick specialist, Eric Phelps Jr. Remember a couple years ago, he kicked that big field goal that allowed them to beat St. Paul's and win the region. So, told us he's going to Alabama State right now. Yeah, Corey. he's a Hornet, and you have to be excited if you are part of the Hornet Nation because we saw what type of dynamic player he was on both sides of the football for oh, yeah. the Wolfpack. Oh, yeah. First and 10. Howell in the slot at the top right there. Hand off to Witsit. Oh, my goodness. Wrapped up immediately. But no. He kept Walker it. Walker keeps it. It's a little RPO. Fake the camera guy off. Fake me out as well. Takes it around the edge there and picks up maybe eight or nine. Good gain right there and a good recognition that the defensive end had closed down on the running back. So he decided to pull it out of the running back's chest and take it himself and was able to gain positive yards. Oh. So they do give Walker the first down, first and 10 for the Wolves. Quick out to Howell on the screen pass there. He's got a blocker, James Jackson in front of him. He stretches out, maybe picks up the first down. We'll see where they're spotted at. Good, good job okay, of parents, the yards. It's, okay, parents, it's time to get connected with Parent Connect. Join Carmen Bounds and Paula Reese as they look into district-wide policies that concern your child's and their school. You can catch them weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. Speaking of connect, Corey, that was a good connect to Howell right there, second and short. It really was, nine yard completion on the play and with 1.15 remaining here in the third quarter, Vigas just trying to go ahead and bleed this clock and have great ball control. Walker keeps it, turns the edge, picks up the first down right inside the hash and I do believe I'll do a uh, former coach Santee Gamble, one of those dirty yellow rags on the field, Corey. There is a flag on the play. Cortland Martin was able to get into the backfield and was held, and he immediately was looking to the officials saying, please tell me that you saw that. And the officials <laughs> were Johnny on the spot and threw the yellow flag on the play. It'll be a holding called against the Wolfpack. Holding against the offense. Ten-yard foul, penalty from the spot of the foul. Take a look at the replay here. And there's your hold right, the there. right there. So once again, Viger goes forward, but then have they have a penalty and they're pushed back. So I'm sure that's something Coach Scott is going to work on with the kids this week during practice and staying mentally focused. And talking about staying mentally focused, there is an injury on the field right. for the Leopards can't exactly get a number from my position right here. He's lying on his back court, possibly maybe cramps. We saw this a time or two last night at the LaFleur rain game. Take it down to the sidelines, check in with Kimberly Dunn. Yeah, and it's hard to tell kids drink enough. 
Um, there's just a few things that's going to separate these teams here tonight, and it's if they are able to execute what they set out to do in the first place. When I was able to speak with the coaches before the game, they said in order to get the win tonight, they have got to control those lines of scrimmage, be able to um, not have any turnovers on offense or defense, eliminate penalties on both sides, and both of these coaches were concurring with each other, saying the same thing essentially. So we know that they have the same game plan in their mind, but it's if they are able to execute it with these players here tonight. Thank you, Kimberly. We do appreciate that. Speaking of players and executing, and, and this is something that takes me back to media days, Corey. Coach Derek Scott talked about challenges as a coach. He said, we're a uniquely talented group, but we can't allow Viger to get in our way. We have to be disciplined, and the biggest challenge is getting everyone on the same page and staying there. And when he said that, now I think about these reoccurring penalties that seem to occur that as they go forward, then they shoot themselves in the foot, and then we're going backwards again. Yeah, it's a situation for all teams across the state of Alabama. You hope to stay away from the penalties, and if you're able to do so, then productive things happen for your team. We'll be right back with more of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Mac McElroy and I'm a junior here at Victor High School. My future plans after I graduate high school are to go to Auburn University and get a mechanical engineering degree. And taking the AP courses could help me get credits to decrease the amount of time I had to be in college. Baker High School has prepared me for college, career, and life readiness by allowing me to participate in these clubs and classes that I'm taking now. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Zodrick Milligan of Blunt, that was the player who went out injured on that previous play. Walker around the edge, Corey. I like what I'm seeing out of the young man right here. He's a senior. We got to see him a few times last year as a junior. Seems like he's somewhat growing and maturing in front of us right now. And that's exactly what you want to see as year to year. You want to see not only the physical growth, but the mental growth as well as all these young men. Second down here for the Wolves as the clock ticks toward the end of the fourth quarter. I'm mean, sorry, the third quarter. I believe Coach Derek Scott is going to let this run out, Corey. Viger on top, 19 to 6. The play clock at 15 and the game clock under 10. So they will not be penalized with the delay of game. And you can see the four fingers going up on the sidelines already for the Viger Wolves here as they are on top, 19 to 6, as we end the third quarter. Interesting battle so far here at the Battle of Pritchard with Viger and Blunt. It was all Sidney Williams in the third quarter. You had a dynamic throw by Kyle Walker connecting with Sidney Williams. He has two receiving touchdowns alone uh, last year. And you, you just look at his situation to where he's just feeling very confident Kyle Walker is with his connection there with Sidney Williams. And, that propels them to the 19-6 lead right here at the end of the third quarter. That's that maturity I'm talking about. Uh, Kyle Walker, Jr. last year, and right now he's a senior along with Williams, and it seems as if they have a connection. I mean, three touchdowns, seven yards, 11 yards, 63 yards. They've gone over top a few times with the young man. Unfortunately, those penalties are costing Viga. I think if they hadn't had so many penalties, Corbett, they may have a few more points on the board right now. I agree. The biggest thing for the Blunt Leopards, though, is offensively they have less than 80 total yards of offense. Right. When they scored the six points, it was due to a short field that was given on a pooch kick on the kickoff. They were able to produce six points and get the score, which is huge for the Blunt Leopards, but offensively they kind of sputtered a little bit, and you kind of expected this with only two stars returning on offense and defense for the Blunt Leopards. This Blunt Leopard team is going to get better, folks, as the season goes on. It you will. won't see them held under 100 yards of total offense very often and possibly not for the rest of the year. It sure will. Coach Lev Holly talked about it, how the talent can change over the years. I mean, last year this team averaged on offense 24 point, I'm sorry, 29.4 points a game. And he says talent comes in cycles. So, but as the coaches realize that, you have to continue to coach these kids, develop them in the classroom, outside of the classroom, on the field, in the community. That's what really matters. So he knows that he has a young team, and he knows he's got a uphill battle, but I believe, I believe they'll overcome it here. They will, and they're going to continue to get better, and it looks like it's going to bring up fourth down 
and probably seven yards to go for the Wolfpack, and it's a situation where the ball is being spotted right at the 40-yard line. You go ahead and you punt this ball away to make the Leopards not only use clock, right. but try to get as many yards possible to try to get a touchdown. Punt is off by Walker, and Blunt decides to let it run out. Next week, we're taking it out to Baker as Theodore will visit the Hornets nest. That'll be our MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, so make sure you join us for that. We'll be headed to big boy football in the second week, Corey, 7A Region 1. Yeah, and Theodore's in a tough battle with Daphne tonight, and Baker had a bye in the first week, so they'll have an opportunity to have their inner squad and try to get better. Danny Smith will have plenty of film now on Theodore. Eric Collier will have to do a lot of homework and do a lot of digging as Baker comes in with a new offensive and defensive coordinator. Yeah, I'm sure, uh, I'm pretty sure the Baker coaching staff took that trip over to Jubilee Stadium to uh, scout the uh, Bobcats tonight. Trips at the bottom of the screen here for the Leopards as we're into the fourth quarter. Brown keeps it up the middle. Had an alley, but it closed up pretty quick. Maybe two or three on that play. Adolph Craig with a solid stick in the middle of the hole. LaMarcus Brown decided to go with the quarterback draw, and Adolph Craig from his middle linebacker position did a great job of using the heads-up technique and securing a, a nice tackle. A little quick out there, incomplete. Tried to get it to Cameron McKitty. Ball a little too low. And the Leopards pushing third down, Corey. The good thing is the clock stops for the Leopards. Right. You know, you, you really waste it down with the incompletion, but they're going to spread the field. They're going four wide receivers, trips to the right. And again, another quarterback draw, and he's going to be thrown down on the play for a loss. Brought down immediately on the tackle right there. D. Anthony Walker also handles punting and kicking duties for the Wolves as well. And we are at fourth and long for Blunt. And when you don't have anything going to the inside in between your guard and tackles and you try to bounce it to the outside, Biker's not giving up containment. They're doing a good job of staying in their rushing lanes and making sure that nothing's available rushing-wise at all for the Leopards. Stoppage in play here. Looks like Lev Holly has called timeout at 9.44 remaining in the contest. Take a look at the Alabama Sports Writers Association preseason poll. We'll start with a Class 4A here. All across the state, no surprise with UMS right on top right now. They're battling St. Paul's for the Battle of Old Shell Road. Clark County moving into 4A, very dominant team there in 3A. They'll be playing in Region 4A, Region, I mean, sorry, Class 4A, Region 1. And down at the bottom, Williamson, 7 and 4. We talked about them. Little team that could. They definitely did it last year, made the playoffs, only dressing maybe 28, 30 players. They pick up three other votes, Corey, just missing the poll there. So uh, keep your eye on out for the Williamson Lions this season. Coach Sumter and his staff, he's added Jamarcus Russell as a quarterback's right. coach to that staff, and that's huge for him in the community. He already had Antonio Coleman doing his strength and conditioning and running his defense. So Coach Sumter and the Williamson Lions moving down to 4A, trying to be a force to be reckoned with. Strives him with a nice punt right there. Howell calls for the fair catch. Feels it at about the 44-yard line. Let's take a look at the preseason 5A poll. Briarwood Christian on top, no surprise right there. Getting some votes here from my area. There it is, the Viga Wolves sitting at number three in the preseason poll. Also Jackson at number nine as well. That will be a really big game 
for the Viger Wolves this season, pretty much between Viger and Jackson. A lot of people saying they should make the playoffs, depending who will be a one, maybe who will be the two seed for And with everybody that Viger has returning, they have been the media favorite and picked as the favorite to win the state championship. Coach Scott doesn't like to hear or talk about that at all, <laughs> as he's just trying to focus on week to week. But right. Viger does have a lot of returning players, and it's evident by the score tonight. Little RPO action right there. Fake the hand off to Whitsitt, and Walker keeps it. Let's take a look at that preseason poll for six, a Spanish Ford, number three from our area, also Sierra Lynn at number eight. Picking up both St. Paul's, Corey, new to 6A, but look at them just outside of the top 10, Daphne as well. So a very competitive region right here, as we said earlier, the most competitive region, 6A region one in the entire state. Yeah, Spanish Ford taking on McGill Tulin, and also you look at St. Paul's taking on UMS Wright, and just some outstanding competition in 6A as far as the top 10 preseason poll is concerned. Second and about nine for the Wolves. That passed a little high outside of the outstretched hands of James Jackson. And lastly, 7A poll. No surprise, Hoover on top right there. They picked up the championship. Matter of fact, Corey, you had a chance to call that uh, championship game on radio. Did a fine job, I must say. Thank you. Hoover and McGill battling it out last year. Right. If many think that it'll be another battle between Hoover and McGill for the 7A state championship awesome. again this year. Fairhope and Davidson also picking up some votes down there at the bottom. Keep your eye out for Theodore. Tyler Underwood, quarterback, senior quarterback. He sat back the past couple years behind Tyler Andrews. So we'll get to see them next week as Theodore travels to Baker. So there are your polls from the Alabama Sports Writers Association, the preseason polls for all 7, 6, 5, and 4A classifications. That play goes nowhere for the Wolves, Corey. Takes them to fourth down. And again, you see both teams get a little edgy after the play, but that's what happens. I mean, you're supposed to play until the whistle blows, but you don't want to do anything that's detrimental to your team and get a personal foul or possibly get ejected. Fourth down coming up for the Wolf Pack. The Leopards were able to stand strong on defense, but here on this offensive possession with 8.05 remaining in the fourth quarter, they really need a spark offensively. Oh yeah, this is it right here. We're not calling Uber a lift. It's time to pretty much get in the car and make it happen for the Blunt Leopards. Great punt by Walker right there. It pushes the Leopards back. Wow. So Viker's gonna down that ball at about the 13 yard line. Absolutely beautiful punt there from Viker. Flipped the field tremendously. Was Walker on that particular punt, his best punt of the night. And now the Blunt Leopards are gonna have to take over deep in their own territory. Looks like the ball's gonna be spotted right at their own 13 yard line. Past couple of series has not been the best for the Leopards, a couple of three and outs. So they need to get some drives going right now to get this thing in gear. Down 19 to six as we are live at Pritchard Municipal Stadium for the Battle of Pritchard. I'm Al Whedon, Corley Bounty. Down on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn. Boy, she's been busy tonight interviewing former players, Hall of Famers. That's how it is when you have the Battle of Pritchett. It is an exciting atmosphere. Little quick out, almost intercepted by the Wolves, trying to connect with his receiver. Had two of them in the area, but Cameron Grays couldn't bring it in. And one year ago, the Darius Evans Busby had five interceptions, almost picked up his first for this 2018 season. 741 remaining here in the contest. That does stop the clock, so somewhat helps the Leopards there, Corey, allowing them to regroup. Dual receivers at the bottom and the top. Little bubble screen here, gets it out. And on the move, picks up a couple of yards there. Melvin Williams, close to the first down marker. Let's see where they, where they spot the ball. Maybe he's about two yards short there. As we look at this replay, it's just a great completion. It's a safe completion. Almost a screen to the right side, and Melvin Williams turns it up north and south and gets as many yards as he can, probably about two and a half yards short of the first down marker. Big play right here, third and short. Leopards need to get the first down to keep the momentum going. Another screen, and he is going to come up short with the reception, Cameron Grays, he couldn't get out of the defender's grasp, Corey. The Darius Evans Bugsby, again, that's Once the again. second time we've called his name on this possession. 
makes a wonderful solo tackle and makes sure that the bubble screen dies right on the far sidelines in front of Blunt's bench. As the clock continues to tick and we approach seven minutes, one name we've called a lot tonight, Corey, because he's been on the field, Emerson Strassen back to punt again for the Leopards. Nice punt by Strassen right there. Howell takes the fair catch at the 50-yard line. A lot of the Viger fans saying maybe that was a interference, but no, no penalty. Yeah. Maybe a violation of the halo rule there. Kick catch interference is what the fans wanted. The officials were right on top of it. And the Wolfpack are going to take over with 6.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And you'll get a steady dose of Kyle Walker as well as Jalen Whitsitt on this partic particular possession because you look at the Leopards, they've been on the field defensively for a long time here in the second half. And sure have. Sometimes you'll see them put their hands on their hips and start to get a little tired. So those holes that weren't open earlier in the game start to become a little bit bigger and all it takes is that quick burst to get it done. Flag thrown on the play by referee Joey Pilgrim. He's just outside of camera room there, so can't exactly. It's like a legal substitution. Legal substitution, okay. Good job with the binoculars there, Core. Going to cost the Wolf Pack a few yards. Looks like maybe five yards, and they're going to have the ball now at their own 45-yard line. Viger takes over at 6.30 remaining here in the contest. We talked about keeping the ball on the ground, but they're going to the air trips at the bottom of the screen as they try to get the ball completed. And that ball incomplete out to Sidney Williams. Short, quick passes, if they are going to pass the ball, is what you're seeing. Not a lot of vertical shots or shots across the middle being taken by this Wolfpack team. And what you want to do is just get your best player out in space. And Sidney Williams is able to do that around the perimeter area if he's able to hold on to that football. That incomplete pass stops the clock at 625. Once again, trips at the bottom of the screen. Howell in the slot. Looks like he's trying to connect with him, but no, he's going to James Jackson. Jackson was going inside and the ball went out. Takes Viger to third down. That's a situation that you don't want to kill the clock on. You wanted to take the kill shot, and unfortunately the receiver and the quarterback got a miscommunication that took place like you just mentioned and because of it 617 now remains and it's going to bring up a third down and long. I am a bit surprised Viger coming out throwing on first and second down up 19 to 6 under seven minutes remaining. I thought we would have gotten a healthy dose of senior running back Jalen Witts. Instead they little swing pass out to Artel Howard. He's on the move. Howell cuts back inside towards the numbers, stays in bounds, which is smart, keeps the clock moving, Corey. Again, you're getting the ball to the outside on the perimeter to your best and quickest players. Kyle Walker with the quick screen pass. Howell takes it north and south, gets the blocking that he needs. On the play earlier, similar to that, we saw a block in the back called against the Wolfpack, which brought it back. On this particular play, there was not one allowing the Wolf Pack to pick up the first down. And we have a blunt leopard who's down. It's going to be just Justice trainer. trainer. I was trying to get my binoculars on him, but the referee wouldn't get out. The, I'm sorry, the official wouldn't get out the way there, Corey, but he finally did. And I like that sportsmanship right there. Willie Anderson down there offering some help for the young man as well, Corey. Possibly maybe some cramps there. Six oh four, right here in the fourth quarter. Let's take it down to the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn has another celebrity in the house with us tonight, Corey. That's right, guys. I just got him coming. Keep him coming. I'm here with Roosevelt Patterson, who is not only a former um, 
Viger player, but he is also a retired NFL player. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me here tonight on this Wolfpack night, the Battle of Pritchett tonight. And look like Viger going to come on top tonight, and we just got to keep on motivating these kids and taking one play at a time. But right now, Coach Scott, they're doing a pretty good job. They're going to get better as the year go around. I see a lot of great kids out here performing, and they're going to execute well. So what did it mean to you to get your start right here on this field? It meant a lot. I never lost in this stadium. It means a lot to me to come back in and, and let these kids know where they're from, Pritchard, Alabama, to let people know around the world that there is great things that come out of Pritchard, Alabama. Me, myself, I was on the back-to-back -back and won a national championship back-to-back. -back. I also came back and won one as a coach as the offensive line, and it's the ring I wear tonight. Those guys could be striving tonight to win that state championship and bring it back to Pritchett, Alabama. Yeah. So what lessons did you learn on this field that helped prepare you for the future that you have had and the experiences that you have been able to have? Well, we had a lot of great coaches. Coach Clark, maybe, you know what I'm saying, he raised the piece. You know, Coach Deere, my offensive line coach, they not only coached us, they prepared us to be great young men, to be successful in life. And I just thank God for having those great men back in the days and we have we need more men like that to teach these young men to step up and be more productive in the classroom and not only on the field and be productive citizens and they'll be great we just got to continue to to motivate these kids to do what's right and keep god first yes so how has mobile county public schools specifically prepared you for the future that you have had oh man mobile Coming from Pritchard, they have motivated me. I had a lot of people behind me praying for me. I went on to the University of Alabama, won the national championship, went on to the Raiders. I had a great career. Now I'm working back at Strickland Youth Center where I'm motivating kids that's locked up and don't have a lot of father figures in their life. And I'm telling them what they need to do. And that's as a young man and a black man telling these kids what they need to do and keep God first. And that's what I learned here being at Pritchard Stadium as Vigo Woodpack in the house. Roosevelt Patterson. With this cutie pie right here, and we great right here tonight. And it's 19 to 6, and I'm loving it. Great deal. Matter T, we sorry, we love you. Everything's still good in Pritchett, and we still love each other. That's the great thing we have here in Pritchett, Alabama. Yes, all right. Thank you so much, Roosevelt, for taking your time with us. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. That's why they call him Big Rosie. It doesn't get any better. I mean, you, you, he's just so passionate, not only for his Wolfpack Nation, right. but for life and for young people. And what a wonderful role model. I remember him being a part of that 92 champion, national championship team for the University of Alabama, as well as a national champion here right. at Pritchard Municipal Stadium playing for the Wolfpack. And, it's so good to see so many guys from this Wolfpack Nation and from the Blunt Nation giving back right here to this game, and it just speaks volumes of what this game means. That's the true definition of unity in the community. You're right about that. I mean, Hall of Famers everywhere. Think about it. You talked about national championship team. He played on the Alabama and a high school national championship team. That team is immortalized in the Mobile Sports Hall of Fame, Corey, a high school football team in the Mobile Sports Hall of Fame. That's how talented those biker teams were back in the late, uh, late, late 80s. Walker around the edge there. It was third down for the Wolfpack. It'll take it to fourth down. Cortland Martin on the stop from his defensive tackle position is able to get the push up field and make sure he wraps up Kyle Walker and, and keeps him that and doesn't let any positive yards be gained by the Wolfpack. Fourth and long here for Viger. They're just letting the clock tick along with that game clock as well. Play clock under 20, no rush. As Big Rosie just said, it looks like it's going to be a Wolfpack night to course. Wolfpack night tonight. Play clock under 10, the game clock under four minutes. Fourth down. Walker looking to add more points on the board. Artel Howell had it in his hands. Howell drops it. Had a flash right there from the blunt defensive player, Zodrick Milligan. Glad to see him back on the field. Maybe that threw his concentration off there. Yeah, I mean, it was a drop by Howell, but Milligan did a good job of trying to defend the play. Sure and did. It's a situation that Howell would love to have that back. And Fourth down, turnover on downs with 3.51 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Leopards are going to have an opportunity to strike here quickly, and I think they're just going to have to find a way to go vertical because it's going to have to be pass, pass, pass because the run game is not proven successful. Maybe a, a screen or something across the middle 
to get this Leopard offense going. Pass out to Williams, and he gets the first down. Tried to pick up some more, but he was wrapped up right there about 38-yard line. The good thing is it does secure a first down for this Leopard team. They're going quickly and going tempo. Again, can't afford to walk to the line of scrimmage. Getting on the football very quickly, spreading out this Viger Wolves defense. And I think the success that they'll have is going to the middle of the field. The middle should be wide open. You're right about that, Core. They're going out to the edge right now. And that ball is intercepted. Intercepted by the Viger Wolves. Darius Busby, Corey, you've been calling that kid's name all night, and he finally gets a pick. Yeah, I mentioned earlier he had five interceptions last season. We'll make that number one for this 2018 season. He had his hands on one earlier and wasn't able to secure it. It's a young man, again, who had 30 solo tackles a year ago, one tackle for loss and five interceptions in 2017. We'll add another INT to his huddle film. Oh, yeah. Put Evans bucks me. We said it at the top of the broadcast. Blunt hasn't lost a Viger since 2012. And Corey, with that interception right there, you could kind of sense the top about to explode here at Pritchard Stadium. The Viger faithful all up on their feet with 327. And they are tasting, tasting that win just about three minutes away. Here's a dose of Jalen Whitsett up the middle. And Brought I'm down behind the line of scrimmage there. I'm surprised that there's no flag on the play because once a helmet comes off of a player, right. you're supposed to stop immediately and not participate in the play due to safety issues. It's hard, kind of hard to tell young people that, but that's just one of the rules to keep all our players safe. And no flag there. Lee Hunter on the tackle. Second and about maybe 11. Ball sitting right there squarely on the 25-yard line of the Viger Wolves as we are under three minutes right here. Which it stays in bounds, Corey. Doesn't go outside to stop the clock, so that's a very smart veteran move there for the senior. The Cameron Johnson on the stop, but you're exactly right. Could have stepped out of bounds, decided to turn it up and stay in bounds. Possibly a timeout being called by Stop. Blunt. Yeah, stoppage and play. Lev Holly, Lev Holly calls timeout at 221 here remaining in the contest. Maybe sensing that it may be over here for the Leopards. Down 19 to 6, and Viger with the ball in control. Third and about eight. Wolfpack faithful still in the house. Sensing their moments away for victory. Next week, we're taking it out to the west side. It's Theodore at Baker. Join us for the MCPSS High School football game of the week. Take a look at Eric Collier and Danny Smith's team. 7A Region 1 action happening next week for the MCPSS High School football game of the week. Theodore at Baker. Players back on the field right now after that timeout. Blunt down to one timeout, and Viger still retains two. We're at 221 remaining here in the contest. Wolfpack somewhat spread out here. Walker airs it out. Almost brought in, but incomplete, so that'll take Viger to fourth down, Corey. Kind of surprised that the Wolfpack are throwing the ball on third down. You have an opportunity to go ahead and try to make Blunt use their remaining timeouts by running the football. Now it's going to be fourth down, and the Wolfpack's going to be forced to punt to the Leopards, and the Leopards have an opportunity here on this field to get it on their side of the field. I don't think the Wolfpack would go for a fake right here, but no, no. Blunt will get the football in good field position. They should be Anthony Walker. Back to punt for the Wolves. Mitchell Harris ready to receive. Ball far short of him, so 
first touch by the Wolves right there at the 39 yard line. As the clock stops at exactly two minutes. Well, I thought it did, Cor, but the game official let it keep running. <laughs> and it's still running. Still out. running. <laughs> I guess that's the home field advantage here, Pritchard. So they finally stopped the clock at 151. Ball will be spotted exactly at the Leopard 40 yard line and offensive coordinator Alonzo Johnson is gonna take his shots down the field trying to find these wide receivers. And I'd be willing to bet you when we tally up these stats at the end of the night that Blunt probably doesn't have over 100 yards of total offense. Brown with the handoff. That play goes nowhere there for the Leopards. Eric Thomas on the stop for the Wolfpack. And again, that's a negative play, which will create more negative yards to the total offensive output for this Leopard team. And the clock continues to run, Corey, as they, uh, they did not get out of bounds with that play. We're under one minute and 30 seconds here remaining in the contest. And the majority of the Leopard faithful have left the stadium. Receiver didn't get out of bounds there. Melvin Williams. Notice on the crawl, Mir Montgomery picking up a big win right there. Coach Stan McCain, 14 0 over Robertsdale. Their first win as they went 0 10 sure did. a year ago. So they won't be 0 for anymore. That's one of the things you talked about in media days or in our preseason meetings. You didn't think no. that they would go and, and be 0 10 again. No, I, I, I have no doubt. I think the Viking land will get a couple wins this season, kind of somewhat turn it around. Coach Stan McCain, he was already on the staff from the previous uh, year, so he's familiar with the kids. Also saw on the crawl right there, Daphne on top of uh, Murphy in the fourth quarter as well. I'm sorry, not Daphne. Baldwin County. Baldwin County. Tight win and Daphne with Theodore on top of Daphne right now in fourth quarter. Under 40 seconds remains here in the contest, fourth down and long. Brown looking to the sideline for the call. And the clock continues to run, Corey. Appears as if they're going to take a delay of game or maybe call a timeout. Play clock has expired. Looking for the official signal. And it is going to be a penalty against it the is. Leopards. I, I never saw a flag, though, Corey. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see a, a flag drop by I never any saw of the officials flag. either. But I saw, I think it was just a given by referee Joey Pilgrim and the crew. 14.9 seconds remains here at the ball game. Even though the crowd may have left, Corey, the mighty marching Leopards are still playing on. Yeah, the band is getting after it. But congratulations to this Wolfpack 2019 senior class as they're able to come away with their first win ever as a class over the Blunt Leopards. Huge victory tonight for the Viga Wolves as they go to the middle of the field to exchange pleasantries and Corey hugs. And as we talked about, cousins, brothers, Uncles, I mean, th this is a family affair here with Blunt Bike. Yeah, fantastic robbery that was ended tonight, a 19-6 final. Kind of what we expected, losing 33 seniors, having an opportunity to reboot is Lev Holly's team. And if you're going to beat this team, you have to beat them early. Right. And you're going to see an improved Lev Holly team each and every week. It's a brick-by-brick brick mentality. Congratulations, though, to Viger and Derek Scott finally getting over that hump. Yeah. and getting that victory over the arch nemesis on the football field in the Viger Wolves and Blunt Leopard matchup. Frederick Austin talked about it at media days, the senior for a defensive line for Viger. He said, I don't want to go 0-4 in my career against Blunt. So they came through tonight, got the win, three big touchdowns. It was the Walker Williams show, if you want to call it, seven yards, 11 yards, and 63 yards, Corey. Huge touchdown passes as they 
gained confidence in one another and found confidence in one another. But it's just not a one-man show for the Wolfpack. You didn't see Jalen Witsit rush the ball with a lot of yardage, but he didn't have to because Kyle Walker was able to find his favorite wide receiver tonight. Right. And there was a lot of explosive offense there in the third quarter on that big 63-yard touchdown pass. That was the only score of the second half that we had. So with that being said, just a great overall week in this unity and community game. Oh, yeah. The oh, Battle yeah. of Pritchard, another one. Congratulations to the Wolfpack tonight. I mean, what can you say from the tailgating to the interviews to the ball game to the Hall of Famers? I mean, it's overall excitement. You can't ask for anything better right here with the Blunt Viger matchup. I know Kimberly Dunn is on the side, I mean, on the field trying to catch it with Coach Derek Scott. But, but Corey, he's hugging everybody from Principal Gerald Cunningham to the players to the mamas to the daddies. I'm pretty sure Coach Scott is absolutely excited right now. And he has to be stoked, and rightfully so, because it's been a while since he's tasted victory over his arch nemesis. And again, this is in week one instead of week 10. There was a couple of years that these two teams didn't even play one another. That's right. And because of it, you know, it takes away from this rivalry. But congratulations to Coach Scott and the Wolfpack team. Let's take it down to the winning coach, Derek Scott, with Kimberly Dunn. All right, Coach, first question I have to ask you, what does this rivalry rivalry win mean to you and your team? It's huge. It's huge. It means so much to our team, our community, our fans to finally bring that trophy back to uh, Viger High School. Well, we have the all-time. We hold the record for the all-time wins with this series. So it's finally getting back to where we uh, hoped, and, hoped and prayed that we'll get to. Yeah. So, oh, oh, oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> These players are ready to celebrate. They're ready to celebrate. <laughs> they almost got me too. I know, I was a little bit scared. <laughs> All right, well, what does this team need to improve on to prepare for next week's game? Well, we're off next week, so that's a good thing. But uh, we're going into getting the future what we need to do. We'll be uh, more consistent on the offensive side. We got down in the red zone a couple more times and then get it, come away with any points. So we got to make that a real focus in the future. But also, we got to get our run game going a little bit better. But that's a really good blunt team. Give Coach Holly and his staff credit. That's a very good football team we just played. Yes. Well, congratulations, Coach. I'm going to let you guys celebrate with your players. Well, thank you much for uh, MCPS TV and all you do for uh, Mobile County Public Schools, and we thank you guys. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right, Corey, Coach Scott trying to avoid the old power, power aid <laughs> bath there. Said, no, 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 no. But, you know, the kids are excited right now. Yeah, and rightfully so. And you, you, you – he was spared from the Gatorade bath. He has an off week next week, has right. something on film now, and that's the important thing, Al. You have an opportunity to look at your team against somebody else besides somebody that's wearing green and white. You can correct the mistakes, and you can look here in a couple of weeks for Viger to continue to get better. Absolutely. And you know what? Last year went 0-2, the previous year 0-3, and, and they ran the table. So having that off week next week for the Wolves, I'm sure we wouldn't be surprised if they win them all out for the rest of the season because they're looking good right now. That's huge, and they're going to be a favorite to contend for that state championship. All right, that's going to wrap it up from Pritchard. The Battle of Pritchard is won by Viger 19-6. We thank you for joining us. For Corley Bounty, Kimberly Dunn, Quentin Howard, and the entire MCPSS production crew, I'm Al Whedon thanking you for joining us tonight. Next week, we're taking it out to the west side. It's Theodore and Baker for another edition of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good night.